Good evening, good evening. How y'all doing? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Can y'all hear me? I got to double check. <laughs> I got to double check. <laughs> hey, David, how you doing? BB, how you doing? God bless you. Nicole, good evening. Good evening. Welcome, welcome. Uh, not for living my wife. Thank you for being here. God bless you. Hey, Nate, how you doing? God bless you. God bless you. David, give me a thumbs up. All right. <laughs> give me all the way in Australia. <laughs> Okay, awesome, awesome. Hey, Props Kanisha, how you doing? Latonya, how you doing? Welcome, welcome. God bless y'all. Thank y'all. Miss Josie, how you doing? Welcome. Thank y'all for being here. Make sure y'all hit that like button as you come in. This is the message I was supposed to do last week, so we had some issues. So I was traveling, so we'll go, go ahead and deliver this message tonight, and we'll get right back to it, you know, on our Wednesdays. But thank y'all for taking the opportunity just to spend a little time with your boy, and then uh, hit that like button. Share this out as well. Uh, <laughs> share this out. See what you said. Share, share this out as well. You know, invite some people in. Uh, let me see. Let's get the couple of announcements out of the way. Just a couple, real quick. Uh, y'all already know Shannon. For y'all that don't know, if just your first time here, hey, thank you for being here. Let me fix this, adjust this a little bit. Thank you for being here. If this is your first time, if you're not following my wife, North Free Living, you're missing out. She's live every month Monday at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time, and she also uh, has CBU and CBE. She got all the CBs and stuff going on. So check her out on our website. You'll be updated, especially if, you know women going through narcissist abuse or coming out of it. You know, check her out over there. Follow me on Instagram, TikTok, uh, Faith Based Workplace 2020 on TikTok, and all those different things, all those different platforms. All right. Uh, let me see. Uh, Pros Kanisha has a YouTube channel, so check her out. She was live. It was last night. I had I was able to catch some of it off and on. So check her out on YouTube and TikTok as well. Uh, as other people come in, we'll you know we'll greet them and and talk about their YouTube channel and things like that. But how y'all doing? How y'all doing? It been a it been a while. Seems like it been weeks and weeks, but I know it only been probably a week. But seems like it been weeks. So how you doing? Pros Kanisha doing great. Pray you all are doing good. Yes, I'm doing. I'm doing great. Went in to work today and came back. So, yes, I'm. I'm doing just fine. I, I, I uh, can't complain. Like they say, I can't complain. If I did complain, who would listen anyway? Maybe Shannon. Maybe Shannon. But how y'all doing? You know, in the chat, right quick. And I, I love when y'all always, you know, uh, welcome everybody in. And you know, first timers or you've seen them before. It's just a loving uh, community, and I love when y'all do that. So thank y'all. Continue to do that. Got sound effects and everything ready to go this evening. Uh, probably said I need a nap. Yeah, you was up late. Uh, I seen you last night on TikTok. I was like, she's still going strong. She was going strong like, like it was 6 p.m. I think it was 12 in the morning. So I don't know. Uh, yeah, my wife put in here. Uh, it's chain breaker time. Uh, it's chain breaker check in time. Join us healing together, a safe and supportive space. Uh, that's the one for yeah, Eventbrite. So if you go on that link right there, you can click on Eventbrite. She still has tickets available. Uh, she's have that coming up. All the information. Go to Eventbrite and also check out our website www.narkfreeliving.com. If you uh, a check in, it's, it's a check in. It's, it's sort of like Rock Your Crown, but a little bit different. But yes, yes. Uh, Nicole say doing great. We're we're in the land of living. Amen. That's what. Hey, that's a great way to look at it, sis. Great way to look at it. Right, right. I'm with you on that one. So again, thank y'all for for being here. And and uh, I don't have the numbers, but I think we only about ten or eleven away from five thousand people. So I thank God for that. So we we getting close. We uh, and I even dropped a video today. I was I was at work, uh, but we had this video, and I might drop a little small something after this. Uh, they get good views sometimes. So we're about eleven people away from five thousand. So if you know somebody. They can help from this content. Go ahead, invite them over. Like I say, share it out, share it out, share it out on all your social media and invite them over. And um, yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. Right, glory, glory. And I'm appreciative of, hey, the, the coming around to 5,000. Trust me, it's been a long road to get to, it was a long road to get to 100 people. It was a longer road to get to 1,000 and then even longer to get monetized and then turn around and try to get even 1500 trust me it takes time to get there kelly kelly how you doing god bless you thank you for being here uh so yeah so i appreciate that so let's get into this message i don't want to waste too much of your time 
Uh, let's get into this message. Hold on, let me pull it up. Feel like I ain't been here in a while, so I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> nah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Oh, and to the VIPs, I gotta say that if you want to join a channel, they YouTube has a new thing where I'm able to drop videos. Uh, on the like before i show it to youtube the whole audience i'm able to drop it on uh y'all might have seen quite a few videos coming out in the last week or so they have this new thing where you can show it to your vips first they get exclusive access for you know 15 minutes an hour or whatever the case may be and then it go ahead and it drops to the regular channel so i kind of like that feature so i'll start doing it a little bit more so you want to get exclusive content uh first scene content videos pictures things like that go become a vip and it's for a small fee. I don't even think it's $4 a month or whatever it is. And uh, we have different things going on over there. And the book club, I haven't forgot about that. I will be posting that uh, this week sometime to go ahead and finish off uh, Does Your Tongue Need Healing by Derek Prince. I haven't forgot. That's chapter two through nine. We'll go ahead and finish that off and uh, get that out of the way. And hey, tomato, tomato. All right. So let's get into this one. How much would you pay to reclaim your life after narcissistic abuse? How much would you pay to reclaim your life after narcissistic abuse? Now, obviously, we're not talking about just money. Could be money, but not necessarily. You know, some people are willing to give it all to be with the narcissist. But how much are you willing to pay to get away from the narcissist? You get what I'm saying? So how much are you willing to sacrifice, if you want to look at it that way, to get away from the narcissist? Just think about that for a second. Think about that for a second. Let me see. Right. What Shannon said, peace is priceless. Peace is priceless. I don't know about you, but the peace that, that we have, just being away from these evil people, is priceless. It's, it's awesome to be able to wake up, no fussing, no fighting, no arguing, no cursing, no, no, you know, just craziness going on in the house. It is, it, it's a good feeling. It really is. It's 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 great. It really is to to be able to not be around certain family members that. And you know what? Shannon dropped a video. I think it was last week. And I think I dropped I dropped one similar. I don't think I did. I dropped one similar to that talking about boundaries. I just want to talk about this real quick. Uh, if you have friends or family members that don't respect your boundaries, guess what? That's your peace. So whatever your boundary is, I don't care if it's a cousin, an auntie, a mother, a father, a brother, a sister, a best friend, since knee high, it does not matter. If these people choose to be around you and choose not to respect your boundaries, let me say it this way. If these people choose to be around me and choose not to respect my boundaries, I'm going to say it that way. I, I just lose respect for those people. And what I mean by that is we have certain cases where uh, Shannon talked about this. You can go check out her video that she dropped. It's a short. Uh, how people will play the peacekeeper. Well, I think everybody, by, by a show of ones in the chat, if you have a peacekeeper in your family, hey, Shevy Sandy, how you doing? If you have a peacekeeper in your family, what I mean by that is, if you have a woman or a man, it don't matter who's right, who's wrong. They the yes man. They the peacekeeper. It don't matter about your feelings. It don't matter about your hopes and dreams. It does not matter to them. Only thing they care about is their peace and they care about keeping everybody together. It don't matter the family want to fight. They don't want you to fight. First thing they go tell you, y'all family, y'all should love one another. Well, guess what? The same family member touched me as a child. So am I still supposed to be? Okay, I know that's too much for, we just getting started. I know we ain't got into the message yet, but you understand what I'm saying. Uh, hey, how you doing, Trucker Life? Trucker Life, how you doing? God bless you. I seen Shannon put something in here. Uh, she say being able to sleep. Mind has clarity. Walking with Abba. Those are things that we miss when we with these spawns. Right. Right. So you have to understand what's going on. I see BB put a one in there. Let me put my one in there as well, because the point I'm trying to get to you is get through to you is we have people in our family and friends around us. You can tell them that someone has hurt you, whether it's physical, emotional, verbal, it does not matter. As quick as you're saying this person hurt me, this person is already saying out of their breath, well, you know, that's your mama. Hold on, time out. Hold on. Hold up. I just told you a life altering situation that happened to me. How can you, you didn't even think about it, but you had the audacity just to turn around and say, but that's your mama or that's your daddy. Or uh, that's your brother. 
I mean, think about okay, maybe it's just me. Well, I, I, it's not just me because I see Latoya said uh uh one BB uh Chevy Miss Jones has put a one in there as well. Think about what I'm saying. Any of y'all, hey Tyree, how you doing, brother? God bless you. Any of y'all have had a personal, especially a family member or a good good friend, like Shannon said, the peacekeeper. You tell them something that has happened. And before you can get it out your mouth all the way, whatever it was, they already saying, you know, that's your mama. You know, that's your daddy. You should call them. So to me, that means my feelings are not validated. That means whatever I just told you, it doesn't matter to you. And I guess in that same sense, it shouldn't matter to me because you only want to play peacekeeper. You want to make sure that everybody is happy. Well, even in families, guess what? Everybody don't get along. That's why I don't believe in the term blood is thicker than water. And the reason why I said it is because people that are blood related, we don't get along with these people. I find friendships and I found family right here on YouTube and on Instagram and on TikTok. You feel what I'm saying? But I'm supposed to be friends with family members that have hurt me. Miss me with that. Like she just said, that's a whole red flag. I got my flag I'm at home. I can pull out my, my, my stuff. That's a red flag. So no, no, it, it doesn't matter if that person is a family member. It doesn't matter. They're your best friend. If they, like Shannon said, the peacekeeper is typically codependent on who wants peace at your expense to your detriment. They rarely, they rally for the NART, but never for you. And the abuse you go went uh, or went through so these people are critical of you, but not critical of the narcissist. Some of what Shannon just said. I'm going to say that again. They are critical of you and your boundaries, but they are not critical of the narcissist and the lack of boundaries. Maybe maybe it's just me. I don't, I don't know. Maybe I haven't been through that. I, I don't know all y'all personally. Maybe I haven't experienced that. I know Shannon has. I know definitely I have. And I know some of y'all have put ones in here. So I know some of you or understanding what I'm saying, the the the, and they're not narcissists. That's the crazy thing. It's just they the peacekeeper. It doesn't matter what goes on. It doesn't matter who's right or wrong. It doesn't matter if you're right ninety percent of the time. It doesn't matter if this person is a narcissist. It doesn't matter if they demonic. It doesn't matter if they possess. It does not matter. All that matters is you making amends to somebody that did something to you. So, nah, again, miss me with that. Uh, Trucker, like I say, I, I sure have. And they say I experienced that as well, right? Straight to the standard. <laughs> Let me see, Shannon say they don't care about none, none of what you went through, bypassing all of that straight to the standard line. Yeah. Uh, Kelly Kelly say that person is a peace snatcher. Ooh, I like that. I like that. That person is a peace snatcher not a peacekeeper that's a good way to look at it because we just talked about how peace is so important so who are you to take my peace my 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 sanity everything that i'm experiencing everything that i'm happy about and if i tell you something you just knock that out of the way and say nah nah not 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 doesn't matter what you say or what you think that's your mother that's your mother that's your father that's your brother in some cases, that's your child. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Shannon say those peacekeepers had to go with the narcs. They just don't get it. Yeah. I'm to that point. I'm to that point. Uh, Tyree say hello, Sam. I love my peace. The peacekeeper, my mother, when a female narc neighbor died, which I knew, mom wanted me to call a female narc family. I'm like, no. See, sit on, that's what I'm talking about. So you already had a boundary that you was no contact and not dealing with these people but the peacekeeper or like like kelly kelly just said the peace snatcher wants you to take your boundaries throw them out the window no matter what you say it don't matter what boundaries you put in place no you're gonna listen to what i say because i'm your mother i'm your father miss me with that as well how many y'all this is on this subject before i really get into this man how many of y'all have a mother or father and it might just be me i don't know how many of y'all have a mother or father that instead of calling you, which you the child, 
and telling you directly what the issue is or what the problem they have with you, they go through another person in your family because you and that person have a close relationship. I'm gonna say that. Let me say it another way. How many of y'all have a parent? Or even a sibling in this case, if you think about it, but we, we're doing parents. How many of y'all have a parent that instead of calling you directly, I don't care if it's a phone call, text message, whatever, but instead of calling you directly, they go on a limb, out on a limb, and call somebody else in the family to have that person then talk to you. Is that just me? Shannon knows exactly what I'm talking about. Happens to me all the time. I'm like, how do you want me to respect you Right, Lolita triangulation. That, that's exactly what that is, Lolita. You're right. How do you want me to respect you? If you're the mother, why won't you call me? Why you got to call a cousin or somebody else to have them call me? I, I was raised as a child. Maybe I'm the only one. I don't think I am, though. I was raised as a child. What goes on in the house, stay in the house. But if I'm not in the house, obviously. But my point is, if it's family business between me and a parent, why does the parent have to go call a cousin or go call somebody else? To tell them what's going on and tell them to call your cousin, which is me. I'm not making this up. I'm just telling y'all how it is. I told y'all a lot of stuff I talk about. It ain't just stuff I heard. It's stuff that I'm currently going through. That's why the messages hit it a little different. When I be saying this stuff myself, I'm sitting there like, I'm going through some of this stuff myself. I'm teaching, but I'm also learning. So that's why when I'm doing the research, I'm, I'm going through some of this stuff myself. So it, it's it's just like, wow. It, it's, it's, like a, it's like a wild moment for me because it's like, how do you call somebody else and, and do that? I, I I don't understand. I really don't. I don't understand. It. Yes, Nate, exactly. Triangulation at its finest. Right, right, right. Right, Shannon. They go to everyone but you. See, what I realize in these situations is they want everybody else to know the business so they can then turn around and play victim. It's an old saying when you're going through a divorce. They always say the, first, the person that files divorce first has the most power. That's not always true. It's just a saying. So I think it's the same thing in family dynamics. The person that go to spread the business or start the smear campaign basically win more family members, which entail has more power, right? So in this case, when the family member go tell everybody else your business or what's going on or what they don't like about you or what what hurt what what how you hurt them, they make you out to be the bad guy. Just came to me just now. So you you've been you've been put out to be the bad guy. But hey, Joy, how you doing? Pink girl teaches. Y'all follow my sister Joy as well. Phenomenal woman of God as well. She has a, a YouTube channel and everything. Follow Pink Girl Teaches as well. They they willing to go to the extent to tell your family, but won't call you. That's like that's like being in the workplace and and your supervisor. Won't tell you what's going on, but they're going to tell your co-worker for your co-worker to go tell you. What kind of, anybody been in the military know it's even, even in regular civilian work, it, it's, 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 you know what I'm saying? It's levels of this. So, you know, it's the CEO, then you might have a VP, you might have, uh, you might have a, a assistant VP, then you go down to, you know, management and, and, and regionals and all these things. Then you might go all the way down to a, 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 a floor supervisor, depending on what kind of job you're at. And then, you know, then you come down to the regular worker. So the regular worker got to go to the floor supervisor, then go this other way. Now, the floor supervisor not listen to you, then you go to human resource. But you get what I'm saying? But it boggles my mind that even in the family dynamics, we got to go all these different ways to all these different people, but you cannot go straight through the soil. To me, if you have an issue with that person, I'm the type of person, you can ask my wife, I'm going to call you directly. I don't have to sit there. I, I'm not being on going back and forth on text, back and forth too much because. It's like, nah, I'm going to call you. Let's get a better understanding because text can be misconstrued sometimes. L let me hear what you're saying. Or we can talk face to face. Not violent, but I'm just saying I just want to make sure that we're on the same page. It just, you know. But some people not like that. They got to tell everybody else and then get them involved and, and make you look like the bad guy. Right, Nicole? Always play the victim. Right, right. Oh, Nicole says it's the same in my, in, 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 uh, it's the same in the family. Yeah. My wife said they typically have everyone on their side so the others are not going to believe you anyway. Yeah, so by the time you tell your story, by the time you tell your story, and see, the thing, they, the reason why they do that is because they can go tell these people stuff about you like for weeks, months, sometimes a year or two. 
by the time you get around to find out what's been going on, go tell your story. Like Rashad said, they ain't gonna believe you. They think you the you you the aggressor and the person that's really the narcissist or the evil person is the victim. So sad. So sad. All right. I just I just wanted to share that with you. I just can't tell. I mean, you know, just make sure you keep your boundaries and keep it 100 and stop worrying about these people that uh that uh don't really love or care about you and, and want you to throw your boundaries to the side and don't worry about your peace. Uh so they make it so so you uh damn yeah, right. Damn you dog, right, right, yeah. All right, let's get let's get into this, man. Let's get. I ain't want to get too far off track, but let's get into this. So again, how much would you pay to reclaim your life after narcissistic abuse? Uh, think about what you gave up to be with the narcissist. So I want you to think about that for a second. Think about what you gave up to be with the narcissist. About when you first started dating, first though when they courted you, if they courted you, before y'all got married, when y'all got married, when y'all moved in together, when y'all got your first apartment, first home, whatever that may look like. Think about what you gave up. To be with the narcissist. And what I mean by gave up, I mean, during that process and probably that first year after being with this person, you probably lost some family members because of the narcissist. You probably lost some friendships because of the narcissist. You probably lost a business or two because of the narcissist. You probably lost some professional relationships because of the narcissist. What my, my point is, we lost a lot when we really sit there and think about what all happened that first year or two or three or four years, depending on how you want to look at it, being with this person. So just think about that for a second. Just just keep, just just hold on right there. Hold on right there. Hey, Arne, how you doing, sis? Say good evening, y'all. Sending love to, to all of you on this good Wednesday. Thank you, sis. God bless you. Thank you for being here. Uh, and they say the fact that they don't care to know the other person's side and to hear them out speaks volumes to how they feel about you. That's right. That's right. So, so when you think about that, we can talk about narcissists or we can talk about the flying monkey. We can talk about the enabler. That statement, let me put this on the screen. This statement that Nate had put the, put up here, it's, it's, it, fly, it, it goes for the flying monkey, the enablers, the, the peacekeeper or the peace snatchers, like we just got a new word, peace snatchers. Uh, what, what I said? Narcissists, flying monkeys, enablers, and the peace snatchers. It goes to all of those people. See, these people, like I say, you can tell them you have a boundary. You can tell them that this hurts you. You can tell them that this person hurts you. And in that same sentence, like I said, they, they don't want to they don't want to hear that. J j just apologize. Hold on. Let me hit the rewind. Hold on. We already at that point. We didn't rewind. We ain't get started yet. <laughs> so I'm apologizing for what? That, that's my question when somebody said, what am I apologizing for? Because last time I checked, I didn't do anything wrong. Okay, I get it. Right, let me hit the rewind one more time. Let me go back a little bit. So, people will say, and the mother or the father will say, well, I'm your mother, I raise you. Well, let me give you my slow clap. Thank God that you raised me. Thank God that you raised the other people that's in here. That's okay. If you know contact with your mother, you know what I'm talking about. Then they'll say, Things like, I don't know what's wrong with him or her. I did all I could. Thank you for doing all that you could. Then they'll go a step further and say, I did nothing to deserve this. I don't know why he or she is treating me like this. So you saying this, if you notice everything I'm saying, it's them playing the victim. It's them dropping little hints and clues to the person that's willing to listen that they're playing the victim. Just saying. George said, I gave up way too much, right? Hey, how you doing, Coach Natisha? Welcome, welcome. God bless you. Uh, humble by God, shalom. How you doing? Welcome, welcome. Uh, Latonya said, Latonya said, could have lost my life, but God did not suffer it to be so. Amen. See, a lot of us, I think we're in situations where we fail, we feel or uh, 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 felt that we probably should have lost our life. But see, God had a higher calling. He had a purpose for you. He wanted you to go 
not that he wanted you to be in the abuse to, you know, be he didn't put you in that abuse. You get what I'm saying? But we made a choice sometime to be with this person. I talked about this before. So knowing that we made a, 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 a choice to be with this person, God allowed things to happen so we can see the evilness and the darkness. So we can teach other brothers and sisters in Christ what to look out for. So I used to not be that guy like calling people out like names, celebrities, but now I became that guy. See, and it's not, you know, they all, all the people, well, you shouldn't be judging. You shouldn't be judging. Well, it's the same thing when you're dealing with peacekeepers or peace snatchers or flying monkeys or enablers or narcissists, calling those people out. Whether you say their name or just talk about what they're doing, it helps other people survive. Let me say that a different way. See, what you've been through can be a survival tactic for you if you deal with it again, but it also can be survival tactics for somebody else. What I mean by that is somebody might have not gone through what you went through already. So you might have went through your abuse, whatever it was, 10 years ago. They have somebody that's 10 years younger than you. Think about this for a second. They going through that current situation similar to what you went through 10 years ago. So by you speaking, praying for them, telling them what narcissist abuse is, telling them what evilness is, then they have opportunity to process what you're telling them and then look at what they're going through and figure out a way to get out of that situation. Now, I'm not saying you can take them out of this situation because everybody got to make their own choice, but you dropping the same thing like the narcissist or, or a flying monkey drops those things and people, those little ideas, you drop an idea that, look, I've been through this. This is what, what, what almost took me out. I'm praying for you. So here you go. And you, it's like putting a ball in their court. What y'all say? She said a slow cap, the, the slow clap, but for real, do they want a trophy for what they signed up for? That's what I'm asking. I mean, they, 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 you know, they, they always say that though, Joe. I mean, sis, they always say that I did the best I could. I don't know why he or she acting like that. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like, like you owe them something. Why, why do I owe you? I didn't ask to be here. You, you, you lay down on my dad. And had me. You brought me into this world. So I hope you did take care of me. I hope you did feed me. He didn't teach me everything that, you know, and no parent is, is perfect. I'm not even perfect. I'm, I'm, I admit to that. But don't sit here and act like, like, Joe, say you need a trophy or something like that. I got to give you some cookies every time I see you because you raised me and did the best you could. And then when you really think about it, you got to ask yourself the question Did you really do the best you could? I, I'm just saying, on the outside looking in, knowing what I know now, did you really do the best you could? Hmm. I'll leave it to y'all to answer to y'all. Think about when they say that, I did the best I could. Did they, though? Did they? We all could have did better as parents. We all could have did better as friends. We all could have did be better as brothers and sisters. We all could have did better. So don't sit there and tell me you did the best you could when in actuality, you didn't do. Let me stop. Let me stop. Let me let, let me let me get back into my mess. See, I got me getting off my mess. Let me get back to the mess because the point I'm trying to make is don't let somebody gaslight you, especially a parent talking about I did the best I could. And then here it is, you know, when you start to have children, maybe this is me, but I think we need to go here. When you have children, which are they grandchildren, they treat your grand, they treat your your children, which are they grandchildren, way better than they ever taught you. I get, I know what you're gonna say. Well, Solomon, I was their first one, but are you their only child? No, they probably got two, three, four other ones. So if they treated you all the same, maybe we could say they changed over the years. That's 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 commendable you to, to believe that. That yeah, maybe they changed over the years. But it begs me to ask this same question. How you doing, the Zuber and Queen? God bless you. It begs me to ask this question. If they did the best they could with you and they're doing better with your children, is that really them being? The best version of themselves, have they changed? Or, or, see, you always got to ask, are they narcissistic? Or are they using your children against you in different ways? I'm going to get off of that. I just, I just want y'all to think about a few things. I just want y'all to think about a few things. Just think about what I'm saying. It's, hey, hey, Violet, how you doing? To me, it's, it's the proof is in the pudding, like they say. I mean, you treated me way different. Treated the brothers and sisters way different. And the head is grandchildren. In some cases, they treat them the same way they raise you. So there's that. 
But in some cases, like I said, they switch. But if they're narcissistic, is it because they change or is it because they want to use your children against you? Uh, North Reliever say they really don't change with the grandchildren. They just change victims and tactics. There you go. Witness Baron, how you doing? God bless. Thank you for being here. Say, but if we hold a grudge against our parents, we end up becoming like them blindly. Let me turn my fan on. It's getting warm in here. I'll respond to that. See, it's not, I, I, I agree with you. If you hold a grudge, yes. But in this case, we're not talking about holding grudges. We're not talking about holding grudges. See, in these situations, what I'm talking about is when you, I got to use my alcohol, attempt to have a conversation with that parent and they don't hold themselves accountable for anything they're dealing with. That's not me holding a grudge. That's me asking you questions why you did certain things in my upbringing because you did the best you could. So it's not a grudge. It's trying. It's an adult child trying to have a, a conversation with an adult parent and an adult parent don't want to hold itself accountable. They get mad and immediately say, you being disrespectful. It's not disrespectful. I'm asking you questions on why you did certain things as a parent. So it's not disrespectful. It's not a grudge, but I do understand what you're saying. Some people do hold grudges towards their parents and, and hate their parents and different things like that. I get that. But in this case, I was talking about myself and most of these things. I don't have a grudge. I did when I first found out some things over three years ago. Yes, I was mad, but I let that go because I can't have evilness in my heart and expect God to bless me. So, no, I, in my case, I don't have a grudge. I just know I'll never get that conversation because I, I know my mother is. She won't have that conversation with me. My brother tried to have a conversation with her as well. She won't talk to him either. So I just know how to go. So there's no point in me bringing up. How do you say that? Why I'm bringing up old stuff. But it's only, it's new stuff to me because I just found out about it. But there's that. There's that. Now let me see a couple more comments. I'll get back into this. Trucker, trucker life, so I can definitely relate to that. Right, right. Tyree say facts. Time you tell your story, no one will believe us. That's why I learned don't defend the smear campaign. Yeah, just let the smear campaign. Yeah. Right. David, same thing. Thank y'all for being here, brother. David said the same. Sometimes you have to stand your ground. And I was just telling somebody this at work today. I said, I used to be that guy. This is this way back. Oh, old, old Solomon. Like I told you, you're looking for the old Solomon check the more because he's him not here. Him not downstairs. Him not in this house. Him not in this body. Him gone. Him not here. Uh, I used to be that guy letting people run over me slightly and, and wouldn't stay on my ground. But as I grew older and got a close relationship with God and read my Bible more, even more now, I'm not that guy. One thing I'm not going to do it is let somebody run over me. I'm just not going to. It just, it don't matter what position you're in. You could be high ranking to me at the job or the military or whatever. It doesn't matter. It's just not. Now, you do it in a respectful way, but you got to, yeah. Kelly, Kelly say, uh, we release them and eventually forgive, but we bring awareness to the enemy. Strat and that's basically what I'm getting at. You, we release them. You go no contact. You, you eventually forgive. At first, you are going to have a grudge towards them. You are going to be mad at them. You are going to probably hate that parent for doing some of the things they did. And like I said, nobody's perfect. But at the same time, at some point, you got to move. Past. Even with the nurses. I talked about this before. I had to get to a place where I forgive them for what they did. And I even pray for them. I ain't say I pray for them every day. I didn't say I'm not going to sit here and lie to y'all. I don't pray for, for, the, for, for the nurses every day. But time, you know, every once in a while, I do say a prayer for them and, and for her children. I, I do, but every day, no, I don't do that. But I, I pray for them. So I have, I even remember, I used to not call her by her name. I did. Shannon used to call it. We didn't call them by their names. Had a, 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 a evil name for them, whatever. And and that's that's what it was. But you had to get past that point. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Trucker likes to unheal people see bounds as as unforgiveness. Right. Shannon and my wife say we need to be able to process emotions and with that comes asking questions. And that's what I'm getting at. See, once you get to a state where you can process your emotions, you want to ask questions. But see, if you're asking questions to a narcissist or somebody that don't hold themselves accountable, you're not going to get the answers that you're seeking. So I can see, again, going back to, to what they said earlier about the grudge, that's where the grudge comes into play because now it's like I didn't built up courage. Well, whoever, you know, y'all didn't built up courage to ask these questions. And all they can say is, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. Oh, they lying on me. Everybody lying on you? 
I don't know what I'm talking about. I did my research. I'm a pretty intelligent individual. I, I did some research, and this this all lines up supposed to be true. But again, uh, Shannon goes say we cannot bypass or sweep things under the rug. Holding a grudge is very different, and only hurts the person holding it. Right, right. I always say forgiveness is for us. We got to understand that forgiveness is for us. Right, say come on. So I'm just I'm I'm just keeping it 100. This might be a little bit off topic. Hey, how you doing, Kimberly Barnes? But I want to make sure. I, I, a lot of people, well, Shannon and I seen this, we witnessed this firsthand, and I, I got hit with it a couple of days later uh, because of the incident, and, and it's just like, your boundaries are your boundaries. Keep your, I didn't did videos on bound. keep your boundaries in place. Hey, Carmen, how you doing? Keep your boundaries in place. Do not let anybody, I don't care if it's a mother, a father, a friend, a relative, a child, a co-worker, do not let anybody go past your boundary. If you have a boundary on certain things, let it be known. I always say that. Let them know what it is because you can't hate somebody for crossing the boundary, but they ain't know nothing about your boundary. Let them know what the boundary is. And then once they cross that boundary, I'll give you one warning. That you ain't getting too many of those. Though. You're going to get one. It ain't going to be two, three, four. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. We're not in that kind of, no, not doing that. So pay attention to what's going on around you when you're with these people. So you have to ask your question, yourself this as well, being with a narc. Did the abuse change? I asked this before. See, going through narcissist abuse, it's abuse. We have to then process, like Shannon was talking about earlier, we have to process the emotions. Did the abuse change? It? In most cases, in most cases, the abuse did change. I, I can talk about myself. The abuse changed me because I started to look at things differently, started to look at women differently. Now, I didn't hate women, but I did look at women differently. So certain things that happened, Shannon and I had to have conversations about certain things because I didn't, I had like a trust issue because I'm like, well, no, 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 I'm saying. So I had to work through those emotions. But if you don't have a person like a Shannon or have a person like, you know, somebody that's working through through their emotions or, or understand emotions, uh, emotional uh, or spiritual warfare or, or anything like that, then you're in a process where, or you're in a situation, not a process, you're in a situation where, the abuse changes you and it continues to change you, but not for the good. See, if you don't get that spiritual healing, that spiritual awakening, sometimes you got to go to psychology and psychiatrists. I get it. And lay on their sofa and tell them so. You got to go to God, prayer. You got to go through deliverance. You have to fast. You have to read your Bible. You have to do a combination of all these things. Ask me how I know. But if if you in a situation where you come out of narcissist abuse and going from pillar to post, meaning you're going from disabuse to another form of abuse. It might not be narcissist abuse, but it might be verbal abuse. Or maybe it's emotional abuse. Or maybe it's, uh, uh, I, can't, I can't think. Maybe it's another form of physical abuse. My point is, when you're going from pillar to post, these people that that, that are yes men and, and, and peace snatchers, they don't care about your emotional well-being. I didn't say the emotional of uh, several different times, but you understand what I'm saying? So that emotional abuse that you went through, if you don't heal that thing and work through that thing and go in the... My point is, if you're not around the right people that help you on this spiritual walk, you're not going to you're not going to make it out of this. If you're not if you're not going to God constantly and praying and reading your Bible and 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 and, and really understanding what you just went through, like working at emotional, you know what I'm saying, abuse, you're 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 I'm not saying you can't make it. Well, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying it's gonna be prolonged because the abuse chain. Let me let me jump in the chat again. It's one of the ones where I gotta keep jumping in the chat. Let me see. Let me see. Uh, trucker life say exactly asking questions only led to them yelling and being defensive. So I stopped trying. Same here. You start asking questions and then they want to be defensive. That's why I'm no contact. I ain't called to do my stepdad no more. The guy that raised me, I'm no contact with him because you start asking questions and immediately it's cursing, calling you out your name. In my case, calling me the N word. Bro, look here, bro. Hey, <laughs> I might be a lot of things, but I'm not the N word. I'm not a B. No, I'm not none of those. Trust me, I'm not. So for some, for another grown man to sit there and call me that and then want me to just be normal about this. Now, the new Solomon, like I said, the old Solomon, check them more. The new Solomon, I can't even say, I, I can't sit there and say I can take that, but I know I built up more faith and more trust in God where I probably could stand more of that, but why would I? Why would I put myself in that position to do it? I'm not. I won't. I can't. I can't. So all that yelling and cursing and pointing fingers and hollering, and we're on the phone, but it's so easy for me to hang up. 
they on my phone. I don't know about y'all, but we all got smartphones. It's a it's a it's a phone with a red thing on there. When they call it, it's green, but when I'm ready to hang up, it's red. I'm so quick to hang up. And I know some of y'all might call it childish, but I ain't got time for that. I, nah, I ain't got time for that. Just like trucker life, I ain't got time for that. Right, David, you really can't negotiate with a narc. Right, right. Uh, Shannon said, it definitely changed me, but then I had to give it to Abba to heal me. Amen. If you don't, you'll become like them. And that, that's my point. So if it changed you, if you haven't repented, if you haven't gave that to God, if you haven't uh, went through deliverance and all these different things, it's going to continue to change you and make you more like them, more like the North. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be like the North. I don't want to be nothing like the narcissist in no way, shape or form at all. I don't care if they was millionaire. I don't want to be like them. Not, not in that capacity. Witness Barry say, thank you for clarifying that. What are the consequences of sweeping things under the rug after being silenced by your parents for trying to address abuse from the past? My parents denied it. Uh, I held. Uh, the consequences are, to me, and Shannon can speak on this, and some, some of y'all answer this in the chat. I love when y'all see it up there. Y'all answer as well. The consequences on something like this is it's going to continue to hurt you. And, and if you're looking for closure, I can tell you right now, you're probably not going to get it. You're not going to get it because if they continue, to, they go they go take it to their grave. It's an old saying. My mama said, I'm going to take it to my grave. And some starts to take it to a grave. Okay. So you're, it's, it's going to hurt you. So you got to give that to God. You just got to let go and let God. I know this might not be the answer you're looking for, but that's the best I can give you because if you continue to try to go to them, and get the answers that you know you're not going to get, it's only going to continue to hurt you. And, and, and you're never going to get those answers. So the consequences are you end up in this cycle. It's not an abuse cycle, but it's like a, a not getting the answer cycle. So you go ask them what you want to know. They tell you it didn't happen. They denied. So they gaslight you in the process. And you you walk away probably mad and angry because you know it happened. So it's like how many times? It's like. How can I say? I, use, I, I love using analogies. So if the stove is hot, we can go all the way back to the child, you know, children with the stove. So if the stove is hot, I can see that, you know, on them old stove, you can see that red eyelid where it turns hot. Or if you got a gas stove, you can see the flame. If I know the stove is hot and I touch it once, it burns me. You can guarantee I'm not going to keep going over there touching that stove. I'm just not. So to me, the parents in this case are like the stove. If I know they're not going to give me what I want or I know what they what, what they tell me is going to hurt me like the stove, like me touching that flame, I'm not going over there and, and, and ask that question again. I'm going to go to God. God, you, you know what the truth is. So I'm going to God, pray about it, give it to God, wash my hands of it, and I'm moving I'm moving on. And that's my answer. So hopefully you get some more answers in the chat. Hopefully that'll help you. Let me stroll down. All right. So a grudge fell, get you so now I forgive, but I still bear the pain. I got you. Thank you for that props. Yeah, please uh, thumbs up the video. Uh, share it out uh, as well. Thank you. Let me scroll down. Let me scroll down. My wife said that man is evil. Oh, she's talking about the man I no longer call my stepdad. That's got to be what she's talking about. Right, Nicole. Yes, yes, yes. Narcs have no accountability. No. No, they don't. They don't. Right. That's what I'm saying. You, you're not about to have me on my phone hollering. Well, I can. I don't even have it on speakerphone. I can put the phone over here and still hear you hollering at me and cursing me out and calling me on my name. You ain't gonna never be nothing. You ain't. You know what I'm saying. You know how to say you ain't. You know the curse word and all this stuff. And I'm supposed to sit here and take on my phone the one I paid to be alone. Man, miss me with that. Nah, what I'm about to do is bloop, hang up and then I'm gonna go one step further block. And when you call from the other number, and I pick up. And I realize it's you. Then I tell you not to call my phone. Delete, block, hang up. Ah, man, look, bro. Nah, I, I'm good. I'm good. Karma say they want us to become them and they want to become us. Right. They always, that's why a lot of parents, I've seen this. I'm going to do a message about this at some point. I've seen where the parents, I think Shannon had talked about this before as well. The parents love to live through the child, meaning the parent wants to be a nurse or a doctor or a lawyer, whatever the case is. They didn't, it didn't happen for them. Maybe they got pregnant young, whatever the situation is, it just didn't happen for them. So they push the child into being something that they want to be. And then the child lives in regret because they'll go into their career because they're trying to please the parent. But at some point or some time, the child just drop out of their career. I don't care if there's doctor because that's not what they ever wanted to do. 
they did that to please the parents. So if the parent passes away, or if the, the parent and them fall out, then they it's like a, a light bulb goes off, and they're like, man, you know what? I don't, I don't want to be a doctor, a, a registered nurse, a lawyer, a attorney. I didn't never want to do that. I wanted to be a book writer, author. I, I wanted to, you know, what I'm saying, just sing in a choir. I mean, whatever the case is. So yeah. Hey, Mel, how you doing? Good evening. Good evening. God bless you. Thank you for being here. Y'all make sure y'all hit that like button. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Latoya said, I could no longer recognize myself. I was just existing. I think a lot of us get to that point. That's why I am beyond grateful for this community. Hey, Amen. I think a lot of us get to that point where I know I, I, I'll tell the story where I didn't recognize myself and other people didn't recognize me. Because I showed up in a Kroger. I tell the story before. I can laugh at it now. But I showed up in a Kroger grocery store, which is like any grocery store, like a Walmart or whatever. I know you have Kroger's in your area, but I showed up in a Kroger grocery store in night clothes and, and looking crazy as I'll get out. I wasn't shaved or anything, just looking crazy. And that was my normal thing. My supervisor seen me. He seen me. And he was like, he was like, Solomon. I'm like, man, what's, it's my crown. He said, you okay? He was saying he wasn't laughing. He's like, man, you okay? Because he know that wasn't like me. It just, I was just existing. I was just going through the mode because the marriage was doing that much damage to me. And I just wasn't Solomon. I wasn't Solomon anymore. I was like just going through the motion in a grocery store, night clothes, just looking crazy, not shaved. I don't, I don't even know my hair. Was, I don't know, but just looking crazy. And I was like, and after I got this, I said, I'll never, ever do that. And you ain't, you'll never catch me in a grocery store in night clothes. You won't catch me outside at night. That's just not. Nah, mm -mm. I'm a man. I, you know, I, nah. Or they say uh, consequences to sweeping things under the rug. Thank you for this. Sis. Is that you? You are uh, living in a delusion because you are looking for answers you won't get. Yeah, you are living in a delusion because you are looking for answers you won't get. Right. Thank you for sharing that. That's exactly what I'm saying. You you will keep going back to that. It's it's like going to the well. You know it's dry. They told you it was dry. They didn't did tests on the well. And told you ain't nothing in there. Ain't no water in there. But you keep going back to the well. Put run that bucket down 40, 50, 60 feet, pull it back up, hoping water come up. Now, if God told you water down there, that's different. We're not talking about that. I'm talking about you on your own accord that's going over there to that well. They have been tested. They say ain't no water there, no water coming from the stream. The stream that's up the thing where the water's coming from, it's bone dry. It, it's just gone. But you go to that well every day, twice a day. Put, run that bucket down there, pull it up, and come up dry. That's the same way when you're going back, the consequences like what, what our name myself was talking about, when you're going back to that parent hoping and wishing that they tell you something that you already know the answer to, you're going to get a dry response. It's like that bucket. It's going to be a dry response. See this right here? This thing is full of water. And I got to drink it before tonight over. But my point, I always do uh, uh, different things and props and stuff. This thing is full of water. So if this is the way I'm going to the well to get water, see, I can get water out of here. So the questions and the answers, the answers that I'm looking for, it can be answered. I say, man, I want some water. And you go to certain parents, you ask them certain questions. Guess what? You go get the answers. But then you go to certain parents, ask them the same questions. It's like trying to drink this. Ain't nothing coming out of this. Until I open it up. But my point is the well or your parents, they dry. They're not giving you anything. Don't worry about it. Just keep it moving. Just keep it moving. Violet say, uh, spiritual warfare is crazy. Most people have absolutely no clue about, about it, none whatsoever. And it, yeah, I agree with you on that one. Are you welcome, uh, witness? God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for everybody sharing with that. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Let me catch up. Let me catch up. I'm way back. Hey, Lyrics, how you doing? God bless you. So let's get back into the We, we went off topic again, but let's get back to the message. Uh, we have to remember that Jesus gave his life for us it's not u.s united states that's for us it's not the u.s it's the u.s but it's us it's the whole world so going through that abuse and and being changed by that being changed by narcissism we have to understand that jesus did the ultimate sacrifice let's get into the first bible verse i gotta catch up a little bit i'm behind uh james 1 12 blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial you know we always go through trials and tribulations uh when he has stood the test he received the crown of life which God has promised to those who love him. So even though you went through that test, which could be the narcissist, or you want to call it a trial or a triple A, however you want to look at that. See, you stood the test, right? You stood the test. Now you still have some work to do, but 
You went through that test. You went through that abuse. You went through that narcissist abuse. You went through going ask your parents the questions over and over. Hey, the abuse, I remember this. I remember that. They're not giving you the answers. That's your test and that's your trial. And it's also a testimony. I'm not saying you got to get on YouTube like myself and, and like Shannon and like like uh, Jor or like uh, Prophet Felicia. I'm not saying you have to do that. That's not what I'm saying. But what I am saying, your testimony might help one person. And and the truth be told, it might be a person in your family, might be a close relative, or it might be somebody at work. That 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 thing that you went through, somebody's going to be telling you they're going through something with their parents, and it's going to start on you a, a light bulb. Your opportunity to share with that person and let them know. Look, I understand. Your you ain't gotta go dump on them. You just gotta relate to them and, un and let them uh, know they go they go get him. Like, okay, I, okay, I, I get it. I get. I understand what you're saying. So the trial, like I just said, the trial that you were in was called narcissistic abuse. That was part of it. That was part of the trial. I'm sure that was, that was that was. And let's just be honest about this. Some people didn't make it out of this situation. Some people didn't make it out of the situation. We hear about these these issues and things where people are unalive all the time and and they don't make it through these situations but some of us did make it through these situations we here we on live right now we 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 we, we thriving some of us we might just be coming out you know what i'm saying of abuse but there, there's 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 warfare that you have to do it's warfare that you must do there's some things that i still have to do and things that i'm constantly doing Things my wife is doing. I know Arne is still working on things. George still working. Different people are at different parts of it. Like Tyree is working things, even in a workplace situation. He didn't share with us and stuff with his coworkers. So we constantly working and evolving and trying to grow our relationship with God and get a close relationship with him, right? But we cannot let point of putting that in there. So with your family and friends, you have certain family members you don't talk to anymore. I have certain mem family members I just share with you. I don't talk to anymore. I have certain friends I don't talk to anymore. Now, some of that is because narcissist abuse, yes. Some of it because of the abuse or other things that happen, but it's friends and family that, that plays a huge role in a narcissist abuse situation. So if those friends or family, like I said, don't respect your boundaries, that's probably people that you might need to push to the side and stop talking to these people. Because at some point or some time, you're going to have to tell them something in a nice, ugly way, if you get what I'm saying. You don't have to curse them out, but you got to tell them something because they're not respecting your boundaries. And, and that's okay. I'm gearing up for a conversation I'm about to have soon. And Shannon already know what I'm talking about. We got to have to have the conversation with a cousin. Love of the death, but we got to have a conversation on, on, on boundaries and why I feel the way I feel about a certain individual in my family and why I'm not backing down. I'm not going to change. I love her, but I love her from afar. So therefore, if you can't respect that, I, I don't know what to tell you. So like I tell y'all, a lot of these times I come up with these titles, you know, it's from God, but I share my own experiences and things I'm going through currently because I think it's more relatable. And then you begin to understand like, okay, he's not just reading a book and, and just coming up with some topics and titles and just in prayer. No, I'm not here to entertain you. I'm here to lead you to Christ. I'm here to save your soul. I'm here to help you get to a place where you can walk away from family members if you need to. Now, you got to go to God and pray about that, but that's I'm just, I'm, I'm just a messenger. That's all I am. I, I, I'm not no different than you. I'm just a messenger. I've just been through some stuff. I'm going through some stuff. I'm just a man just trying to have a relationship with God and trying to save other brothers and sisters in Christ. That's all I'm trying to do. I'm not trying to be no bigger than nobody else. And when I be telling y'all to, to share the message out, it's not all about the numbers. It's about other people that we know that's going through narcissism abuse, other people we know that's going through domestic violence, other people we know that's going through sexual assault and all these different things. They need to hear these messages. They need to hear the message that Shannon be talking about. They need to hear the deliverance and, and things that Prof. Kanisha talking about in Joy. And then you got to go through, you know, uh, Shannon and, and I know Prof. Kanisha both do uh, the first of the month, they do uh, fasting. Maybe they need to fight because if you've been doing everything in your life the same way and nothing has changed, maybe it's time to change what you've been doing in your life. You'll catch that later on. You'll catch that later on. Oh, I hit the wrong one. My bad. So going no contact is part of you getting your peace back. So a lot of us have gone great rock. A lot of us have gone low contact. Some of us have been, have went no contact, total no contact. I posted a video with a young lady was talking about it. It's getting good reviews on TikTok and on YouTube. She was just breaking down no contact. Things I've said before, 
uh, she just broke it down. And she said she'd been no contact with her mother off and on for 10 years, but for the last five years, she has been no contact with her mother. And when she say she said no contact, she say she don't know where the woman live anymore. She don't have her phone number. You understand what I'm saying? She don't follow her on social media. Last time she seen her, she said she seen her son. He was two. He's seven right now. That's the only time she ever seen. My point is, that's what I be talking about when I'm saying no contact with people. She said she don't know her own mother phone number. She don't know where the woman lives at. That's no contact right there. She don't follow her on social media. That's no contact. She don't talk to her daily, weekly, monthly. She ain't talked to her in five years. That is no contact right there. Same way I'm no contact with the, the dude I used to call step for. I don't follow this dude on social media. I don't call him. I don't call him and tell him happy birthday. I don't text him. I don't say I love you. I don't do none of that. I don't know where he stay. I know he's still in Louisiana, but I don't know exactly where he stay. I don't care to know where he stay. I won't know where he stay. It just... That's how I keep my peace. Because I know if I go back in there, it's like me going back into a Mike Tyson uh, punch, I mean, uh, uh, a boxing match. I'm going to get hit again. It's probably worse than what it was before. So why would I put myself in that predicament? Not going to do it. Not going to do it. My wife says, sad how destructive they are. They are about to manipulate and triangulate you uh, from people you truly love. It's sad. It's actually sad. It's mean. It's evil. It's disheartening. It's wrong. And you got to ask yourself, do they know? Or are they are, are they just so caught up on, on, on their piece that they got to snatch your piece away? Like, I mean, you think about what I'm saying? I mean, they so, they want peace so much around them that... that well, I tell you. Right. I like I like that, but say love that goth it is, right? Hey Ali Joe, how you doing? Karma say spread and knowledge so others won't perish. Amen. That's what we all about. Hey, how you doing, to, uh Tara McDonald? Peace is more important than contact. You can say that again for the people in the back. Peace is more important than contact. See, a lot of people can't understand what Shannon has done with her with her parents. A lot of people can't understand what I did with a stepdad. Uh, I don't call him stepdad, but the dude that raised me. A lot of people can't understand that. They can't understand that you no contact with those people. Well, that's your mother. That's your father. He raised you. So I don't know what's wrong with you. They think that by default, because he raised me, that I have to continue taking the verbal abuse that you can go over there and take that verbal abuse when he's drinking and 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 cursing out the nurses like I've heard he, he he's been doing lately, cursing out the nurses and 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 all these different things. You can go over there and 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 deal with that. I checked out three and a half years ago, almost four years ago. I'm good. I don't lose no sleep over being no contact with him. I'm good. I'm good. I don't know about you. I'm good. I'm not going over there to get nah. I'm not going over there. Not for that. You shouldn't go over there for that. If you know this person is going to curse you out and verbal abuse you and call you fat or call you skinny, call you ugly, tell you you're never going to be nothing, why would you go over there again? If you know you go ask the parent a question and they're only going to lie to you, why ask the question? Why even go over there and put yourself in a predicament? I had to learn the hard way. You ask the question, you don't get the answer. How many times? I did it I did it probably two or three times that I learned, like, you know what? I'm not asking that question no more to the parent because they're not going to give me what I'm looking for. Uh, and they say exactly the same. Protect your peace at all costs. Amen. Amen. Let me scroll down. Hey, Mindy Mahogany, another sister on here with a YouTube channel and TikTok, and she can sign, y'all. She can sign. S-A-N-G, sign. She said, I've never heard of no contact until I heard this type of teaching. I See, a lot of people in family dynamics, not easy to go no contact with a, with a friend or a co-worker. That's, that's easy. When you say a mother or father, people look at you with the side eye. Oh, something must be wrong with him if he no contact with his parent. Why can't it be something wrong with the parent? <laughs> Why got to be something wrong with the person that's no contact because we're protecting our peace? It can't be something wrong with the parent. They automatically assume that the parent is in the right and the, the child is in the wrong. Even though you're an adult child, you're 30, 40, 50, 60 years old, you no contact with your 80-year-old mother, your 60, 70-year-old mother or father, automatically you assume that something is wrong with me? No, I'm no contact to protect my peace. 
I'm no contact because I don't I don't want to get angry in a situation because I know not what I would do. Yes, I said it like that. I know not what I would do. I know that's not proper English. I don't know what I'm gonna do in a situation like that. So I keep myself out of those situations because there's no need in putting me putting myself in a place or a predicament where I got too much to lose. I'm not talking about houses. I'm not talking about car. I ain't talking about. I'm talking about my life. I'm talking about my family. That's all I'm talking about. I'm talking about y'all as my friends and family on YouTube. I have too much to lose to put myself in a situation where I can end up in jail or in prison behind a person I probably shouldn't be talking to anyway. Mm -mm. Miss me with that. I'm good. I'm good. I'm not gonna put myself in that in that situation. Mm -mm. Not not on my watch. So think about that for a second. Wouldn't it say the guilt is crazy out of no contact? You need supernatural strength to per persevere, right? That's why I say you got to go, you got to find your community like this one. And I didn't, I'm not just talking about my community, but it's it's the nar narcissist community. Now you got to test spirit by the spirit. You know what I'm saying? They got some channels out there. I say they they great. My wife channel, I'm not just saying it because she's my wife, Narc Free Living, she's in here. Great channel. Uh, Minnie Mahani has some great teaching. She's in here right now. The one I just had up, she has some great teaching. Props Kanisha, she has some great teachings on deliverance and spiritual warfare and praying and fasting and all this stuff. Uh, uh, who else? Pink Girl Teaches, Joy, she has some good kind, some great content. And they got others. I just don't listen to. I just you guys know I don't listen to all the people. I'm talking about not the people by name. I listen to them. I'm talking about all these other people. I just don't. I don't listen to a lot of people because I don't want to get. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't like listening to what a lot of people say because I don't want it to influence my thing. That's why if you look at my content. I just stick to my content and, and whatever God tell me, the Holy Spirit lead me when I get live, go live. And that's what I do on this ministry. I just stay away from other people's content. I listen to some, but I can't listen to all because I don't want it to, to you know, do anything. Uh, my wife said it's not meant for them to understand. They get understand, right. Uh, our boundaries because they, since she got it in caps, don't have any for themselves. They don't have any boundaries for themselves. They lack boundaries. They need to be taught how to build boundaries and then they'll get the piece that they're looking for. Just saying. Which is why their lives are the way they are, right? Uh, and they say, uh, past one people to understand my choice. Oh, so I'm past one people to understand my choices. God is on my side. That's all that matter, right? I, I had to get to that point too, where it does not matter. If you don't live in my house, it's only four of us in here, but you see where I'm going with this. If you don't live in my house, I don't I don't have to run no decisions by you. Who, who are you? I don't have to make sure you like what I'm talking about because I'm talking about narcissist abuse. I don't think I'm better than you because I'm talking about this. I'm trying to help other people survive and thrive and grow and achieve. So just because you don't understand narcissist abuse, which is weird to me. I didn't had this not told to me directly, but somebody told me this. I talked about this before. But they on their phone all day, every day, playing Candy Crush and, and Candy Saga Crush. I ain't thought the game was trash. But anyway, playing games, domino, whatever they play on their game, on their phone all day. You can Google narcissism. Matter of fact, you can watch one of my videos. You might figure out what narcissism is. But for you to sit there and fix your mouth to say, oh, that, that big word, every time, it's narcissism is not a big word. It's big and, and, and a lot of people need to learn about it, but it's not a long word. You know what I'm saying? But my point is, these people are just gaslighting. It's because they don't want to understand what you're talking about. So they don't want to, they're not going to understand your choices as well. I agree with you. They're not going to understand your choice. So when you tell them, when you tell them you're not celebrating holidays anymore, oh, it makes them mad. Is that just me? Let me scroll down. Let me catch up. Let me, oh, let me catch up. Is it just me? When you tell, hey, Jai, bro, how you doing? God bless you. When you tell parents, friends, family members that you're not celebrating pagan holidays, did they get mad at you? They, they, they did myself got mad at me because I'm not celebrating the holiday. I didn't, I didn't say <laughs> all I said, I wasn't celebrating Christmas, New Year's, Thanksgiving. Cause I started looking at the, the pagan tradition, Halloween, all that. Oh, what, what's wrong with you? You, you celebrated your whole life. So therefore I got to continue celebrating until I pass. So I can end up in that. Let me scroll down. Let me see. Let me see. I can't be the only one. Lee Nicole said, oh, they big, they got they get big mad. Big mad because you're not celebrating the holiday no more. Ain't that crazy? Why? Because you're not getting them gifts. They mad at you making a charge, especially for the parent. Well, I, I taught you to, to celebrate. Well, you taught me wrong. You taught me wrong. 
That's what we do. I can't even say you don't understand. You don't want to understand. That's okay. I understand now that what I did I had to repent for, and that's not what I'm doing any further. So no, I'm not going to continue celebrating pagan holidays. I'll give you another example. Shannon, I was just talking about this the other day. Do you know, I told this person, I had a nickname. I'm not going to say what it is. I don't go by it anymore. But I had a nickname. And I get to the age where, you know, I'm not you be going by this nickname anymore. I want you to call me Solomon. Now, one side of my family, they understood the assignment. Aunts and stuff, they call me Solomon. You know what I'm saying? Like Solomon, Solomon. Other side of the family, just one person in particular was like, why well, I've been calling you that your whole life. Why you want to change this now? This is the truth. I had just told her maybe a few weeks before. I don't know which one happened first, but I had just told her something about the holidays. Oh, this is too much. First, the holidays. Now you Hold on. People want you to stay. Hold on. People want you to stay in these situations because they still in them and they choose not to understand them. So since I had a nickname since I was whatever age, and I don't want to be called that nickname anymore as a grown man. Again, you're mad at me. So not only are you mad because I don't celebrate holidays that are pagan, I don't want to be called a nickname because I'm a grown man. You mad? Like you act like that was my I could see if I was going to change my name from Solomon to 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 David or Solomon to, you know, whatever name, you know what I'm saying, Paul or Peter or whatever. You get what I'm saying? I can see you getting a little mad about that, but then again, it's my name, so I want to change it. Who cares? Who cares? I'm a grown man. I changed my name to 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 uh, whatever. It doesn't matter. But these people want so much control over you, so when they, when their control starts, when their grip, they have when it starts to slip, and their control isn't you know what I'm saying? You, you're starting to slip away. They're like, well, hold on. First, it's the holidays. Now, it's your nickname. Then, you're not buying me gifts anymore like you did for my birthday. Now, you don't call me like you used to. Hold on. I never really did call you. Let, let, let's, let's, hit, oh, let's hit the rewind on some of these things. Hold on. Um, really, really, really. Um, it's always something. We get the mic working and then the internet goes in. I don't know. Hey, uh, let me see. I was trying to, uh, or they say you grow. People have some kind of nerve, right? So it doesn't matter. What you think, it don't matter about your feelings. It does not matter. If they called you a certain nickname, they want to call you that to the day you, you're no longer on this earth. If, if you celebrated holidays when you were young, you got to continue celebrating them to you old. If, if you was buying gifts before and they didn't, they wasn't, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? You was buying this person gifts, right? They still, they still want something, even though you don't have that kind of relationship with them anymore. Somebody make this make sense. Yes, calling your names that you no longer answer to. Right, Nicole. Right. Uh, my wife say again, it goes back to boundaries and control. People refuse to respect others' boundaries. Right. Right. Men to say, men about my sister say, say, folks don't like the way growth looks on you. <laughs> I could do a short on that one. Men my not challenge you, says you need to do a short on that one. Folks don't like the way growth looks on you. I'm gonna do one on that too. I challenge you to do one, sis. I'm laying down a chat. Matter of fact, Shannon in here, I think who else in here? Uh, I don't know if Jordan Pocket, I just do a short on that. People, however, you want to say it, folks don't like the way growth looks on you, they don't. So you can grow and grow grow out of certain things like 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 pagan holidays and things like that and nicknames and whatever, and they don't they don't like the way they look on you. I like that. I'm I'm about to I'm about to do <laughs> I'm about to do a short on that. I like that one. I like that. I like that. That's cool. That's cool. 
Uh, Nicole said, I have asked my family to no longer call me those childhood names and they continue to do it. So I no longer want or need to be bothered with you. Right. I just thought, I just look at them like they're crazy sometimes. And then they, you know, they don't do it much, but a couple of them do it. And, you know, they'll go, ahead, oh, Solomon, my, my bad. Yeah, you're right. You're bad. <laughs> you're bad. <laughs> I'm like, man, come on, man. Like, what are we doing, man? Shannon said, if someone told me that, I would simply respect their wishes. Like, it's not harder. It's not, I mean, I get I get you going to make mistakes because, you know what I'm saying, you've been calling them that name, and every now and then, like, man, I slipped up. That's okay. But don't go out of your way to call me that name just because you don't like the change that I'm, nah. We're not going to play them games. I just, hey, how you doing, C. Warren? God bless you. Thank you for being here. I just stopped answering to that name. Hey, how you doing, love and care? God bless you. Thank you for being here. I just want to ask about that name. We could be sitting in a crowd, a room full of people. You can call me that name you want to. I'm gonna look around like everybody else looking around. And they're gonna be like, they go catch her. Oh, Sodom, my bad, Sodom, Sodom. Yeah, okay. What you want? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Trucker Life say, that's because they can no longer abuse and misuse the heel version of you. Ooh, y'all coming with some, some mic drop, some, some gems up. And that's why I love the chat. The chat be coming through. Thank you. Thank you. Let me get back into this message. I, I didn't got off, off, off course again. Uh, where I'm at? Uh, So I said this. Let me quick recap. Go on no contact is part of you willing to lose your soul. And then, and then do it. Hold on. Are you willing to lose your soul to stay around people that disrespect and don't love you? Let that sink in. What's, what's put on that screen right there? Are you willing to lose your soul to stay? Because see, staying around them people mean you go still go celebrate Christmas and you still go celebrate Thanksgiving and, and, and New Year's and, and Halloween. Because you got to stay around them. Because if you don't go around them, they call you, coming to your house and all this stuff. So to keep things, you know, to be the peacekeeper or the peace snatcher, like Kelly Kelly said earlier, you go go around these festivals, the Halloween celebrations and Christmas and all these other demonic holidays. And you'll go over there when Easter, you got to sit on the stand, the, the, how we got chocolate bunnies and eggs and what they got to do with Christ. But that's what I'm holding the teach. My point is, you still gonna go around these people. So are you willing to lose your soul to stay around people that disrespect and don't love you? Because at the end of the day, they disrespect your boundary and they don't love you because they love you. They wouldn't disrespect your boundary. Ooh, that's good. I like that. That's good. That's good. That's hot. That's hot. <laughs> I like that. Think about what, what I just said. See, why I say absolutely not, right? That's why I'm, here. I'm like, nah, I'm good. I don't, I don't have time for that. I got the wrong one. Uh, Alan Joy say, I better not see one of those astrologers. <laughs> Found a picture with me in the, in the Facebook. I'm a report deal. Untag me with that. Yeah, I, I, be, I better not see one of them doggone pictures. Nah, don't put me in that. Mm -mm. Untag me. I don't like it. I'm going to reach out to the person so quick. Please take me off of that. I, I, I don't, I'm not a Libra. No. I did, I renounced and denounced that. No, I'm not. I'm, I'm not none of that. And that little weird, that little weird song y'all playing. Don't tag me in that. Mm -mm. Please don't. Please don't. Thanks for this, for saying that. I'm a peacekeeper and stay away. Right, right. Home by God say nope. That's why I don't have friends right now. Deep in the wilderness and on a potter's clay. Amen. Sometimes you gotta go. You know what I'm saying? You gotta get away from people so you can get your healing. You know, the the more you stay around these unhealed individuals, the Go deliverance, you wonder why the renunciation is not working because you're still around the same old people. Sometimes you got to get away from them people for everything that God want to bless you with to take effect. You go catch that later on. You go catch that later on. Think about what I'm saying. Because the question is, has it worked yet? You didn't went through deliverance three, four, five times. You're seeing some little changes, but you know the deliverance that you went through should have changed a lot. But you're still out there with them people, still celebrating Halloween. Buying your kids costumes, still going over there for Christmas, putting up that tree, buying gifts. Okay. You still letting them call you a nickname? You done told them not to call you the nickname? They still doing it? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I'm good. So you got to ask yourself, are you really willing to allow people to cross your boundaries? I'm not. I'm going to stand. How do you say that? I'm going to stand on that 10 toes down. I'm not, a, I'm not letting people cross them boundaries. Whatever boundaries are in place. If I tell you not to come, I always use a simple example. We have a, a ruler. Don't, don't come show up to my house unannounced. Mm -mm. Please don't do that. Please don't do that because the thing is, you're going to show up unannounced 
And I'll be sitting right here probably on this computer, especially sure right now. I'm not getting them answering the door. You can ring the doorbell three, four times. Shannon might open the door. I don't know. I don't even know she's gonna open the door. She probably go look at you through the camera and be like, hey, you know, what you, what you want? I mean, we ain't telling she was coming. We not even home. I'm like, well, I can hear him talking. Don't matter. <laughs> so it doesn't matter. He's not open the door. My yeah. You gotta have you gotta have boundaries in place no matter what that is. I don't care if it's people not coming to your house, not calling you after a certain time, not calling you nicknames, respecting the fact that I don't want to celebrate Halloween, Christmas, and New Year. Why, why does me not celebrating that hurt you? But like we already discussed, it's because that control and all that stuff is slipping, and they they like nah. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Right, Nicole, get away from negative narcs. And be around kingdom-minded individuals. So you get away from them negative narcs. You can have some positive influences around your life. Like kingdom-minded people. They go teach you some things about kingdom finance. They go teach you some things about deliverance. They go teach you some things about going no contact, low contact, about great rock. They go teach you about the different versions of narcissists. They go teach you about witchcraft and sorcery. I'm just saying some of the things they go teach you. And it's a lot more. It's more. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So get away from them people. Them people don't want to learn nothing anyway. I don't care about you. Can I get to say agree? Uh, my wife said to be healed and whole, you have to do things that you have never done. Yeah. To be healed and to be whole, you have to do things that you have never done before. I'll go a step further. The honest truth is most people are not willing to lose other people, but they are willing to lose themselves. Man. That's a mic drop right there. Somebody put some flames in the chat or something. That's a mic drop. Think about what she's... The honest truth is most people are not willing to lose other people because they're so close and, and so enmeshed with these other people, whether they family or friends, they're not willing to lose them. But they wouldn't lose themselves. And by losing yourself, guess what? You can end up in hell. You can end up in domestic violence. You can end up with another narcissist. You can end up in a lot of places you're not supposed to be in. You can end up in places that God never wanted you in. But by the choices you made, by the people that's around you, you end up in a situation that you shouldn't be in. Man, that's deep. That's why I say go follow Shannon on North Free Living. She be dropping, even in the chat, she drop, dropping bombs. Uh, fact, some of these nicknames are like a word curse at this point, and I'm overdoing it. Hey, I don't, the nicknames, I don't even know what the nickname mean or whatever, whatever it was, but I don't, I don't want to be called that. My name is Solomon. That's a powerful name in the Bible. Call me Solomon. Why we got to go by these nicknames? Like they call you, you know, they've been calling you Jitterbug your whole life or uh, 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 Lil Fat or what? Man, I don't, you're not fat, so why are they calling you Lil Fat? You're not little anymore. That's back when you was two, three years old. You you, you, you might be big now, but you ain't Lil Fat. Like what? why you still calling that man Lil Fat? Even rappers don't even want to be called, Lil Wayne don't like to be called Lil Wayne no more. They call him Wayne. He's not little anymore. When he's a little Wayne, he's like a teenager. He's not Lil Wayne. He's a grown man. I'm just, I'm just saying. So why, why hold on to these things, man? Come on, bro. Now they want to be called that. Hey, call them that. But I mean, they want to, they don't want to be called that. Hey. <laughs> or they say them, knock, knock, knock. Me, release the hounds. <laughs> see, see, sis. That's why, that's why I want to get a big dog. See. Get 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 me a uh Connie Corso. I seen one video where I don't need that though. He jumped through the door. Somebody came up to deliver a package, I think it was Amazon or something. He dropped the thing in the door, running the doorbell, was taking standing back to take a picture. The dog jumped through the door. I know that man used the bathroom on himself. I know he did. I, I might have seen as a black man. I know, I know when he got home, he had to check himself because he wasn't expecting a great uh not a great dog, Connie Corso. You go Google Connie Corso, you'll see how big they are. They they pretty tall and big. That dog jumped through the glass door with the curtain. And the dude jumped. It was like six. He jumped all them steps and ran. And <laughs> I'm pretty sure he had to check himself. But again, yeah, release the hounds. Release the hounds. <laughs> Thank y'all for putting that fire in the chat. God bless y'all. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Might drop. Right, Chevy? Might drop. Might drop. <laughs> Little June <bug. laughs> Hey, Arne, you know that. I didn't mess with people that's called... Uh, uh, little fat or fat fat and all, man. Come on, bro. Kelly, I, I'm just saying that's what they used to call him. Little fat, June bug, man, little dog. I mean, all kind of little weird man. The man, 60 years old. Why you still call him June bug, man? What? June bug, little fat. 
Nickname Precious? That ain't your real name? What you? Come on, man. Come on, bro. <laughs> Mel say Wayne is still little, though. <laughs> Oh, you seen that uh mini mark? I'm, I'm telling you, that dog jumped through the door. But I, I don't think I'm gonna get one because the kind of course, so uh he uh I don't know. I, I'm I'm worried about him slobbering everywhere. That's what I'm worried about. Shannon, I had a, a discussion about this, so I'm worried about the slobbering. You know what I'm saying? So I might have to get something, I might give me a schnauzer or something, something a little bit more. Oh, yeah, I see what you say, Arne. Goku was a cane course, so 185 pounds, rest in peace, right, right. Good teaching. Yeah, Lil Pee Wee. Why are you calling this man Lil Pee Wee and he, he's 40 years old? Lil Pee Wee? Lil Chuck? Because he wore Chucks the whole time? Come on, bro. What, what are we doing? Look how they say they do slobber and shit, right? <laughs> or they say, y'all Solomon's teaching good. Go ahead, bro. I'm just, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm just in my zone right now. I'm just in my zone. That's all. I'm just in my zone. All right, let's get back to this. Let's get back to this. So, uh, let me see. Next Bible verse. We're about to go ahead and run through this. Proverbs 26, 5. Answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own eyes. I had to go. I said, I'm going to look up what exactly what a folly is. Folly, I thought, I, I just what I thought it was, but I just wanted to make sure. It's a folly, lack of good sense, foolishness. So again, the Bible verse says, answer a fool according to his folly. So basically, lack of good sense, his foolishness or her foolishness. So when these people questioning you about nicknames and 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 why you're not celebrating holidays and you done told them it's pagan and why you talking about narcissism and you got a thousand videos at this point on youtube and tiktok and they questioning why you're doing it go to the bible verse proverbs 26 5 and answer a fool according to his father just ask them it just it just 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 charge it to a lack of good sense and foolishness because at this point if you still talking about you a Libra or Aquarius, if you still in sororities and fraternities, if you still with narcissists and talking about they go change, if you, I can keep going. I, I'm just saying, if you if you around people that that's, that's peace snatchers and you think they go change, I, if you if you have boundaries and people not respecting and you still on that, I, hey, answer a fool according to his folly. You don't want to hear some of my answers when. The, the, the new Solomon, I'm always evolving. So knowing this verse and knowing what it means and, and it's for <laughs> the next person asks me something silly like that. You know what? The next person asks me something silly like that, that I know personally, that's a family. I'm just going to send them one of my videos. That's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to answer. I'm just going to send them a video. They're not going to watch it. I'm just going to send it to them. Though. <laughs> I'm, I'm serious. I'm going to send them a video. So we must stop letting people control our lives to please their souls. Read that again. We must stop letting people control our lives to please their soul, not our souls. It's to please their souls. See, by controlling you, I always tell you, and y'all know this, control is a form of witchcraft. But that's to please them. I'm not about that narcissistic stuff anymore. I'm not about that control and that misuse and that abuse. Nah. So they want to have at it. Do what you do. Do what you do. I think we back having the internet stuff. Do what you do. We almost done. We almost done. So are you willing to not be yourself to please others? Because that's what you got to really ask yourself. Because I can't go around family that's celebrating Christmas because then I'm not being so. See, it's not just Solomon on YouTube. I'm the same way off YouTube. It's not just Solomon on TikTok and what you see on TikTok. I'm, Solomon's still off TikTok. I'm not going to the Christmas party at, at work. I know they go. I'm not going to the Christmas party. I'm not going to 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 the uh, the Easter celebration at the church. A church that I go to, I won't go to. Why would I do that? If I'm not celebrating the holiday and I got convictions about it, why would I? If you see me on the, on the on the thing, I'm like he just taught on Easter. Talk about not saying he at the church. You gonna look at me like I'm crazy. You're not going to see that. I, I, I guarantee you won't see that. Mm -mm. You're not going to see it. You're not going to see it. Don't worry about that. My wife saying what's crazy is we respect their boundaries to celebrate or be whatever they choose to. 
an, another mic drop. She ain't just in here dropping bomb. She's saying what's crazy is we respect their boundaries to celebrate or be whatever they choose to. With no judgment, crazy how their boundaries work. It's like what I said earlier. The parent wanted to be a nurse, didn't do it, so they pushed that off on the child. The child ended up becoming a nurse, the doctor, the lawyer. It's the same thing with some of your family members, some of your friends. They, 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 they take their boundaries and push them off on you. So then your boundaries that you set in place or lax of days ago are soft because you don't have no boundaries. You go on by what she's saying, you go on by their boundaries. So who's running who? Who's in control of who? Who's your idol? Because let me tell you, if you follow their boundaries and do everything they say, I'm not even going out on a limb on this one. I'm willing, I'm betting, I'm betting on this. I'm not a betting man, but I'm betting that that person is an idol in your life. You might not consider them the idol, but think about what I'm saying. If you do everything they, they say do, if you say don't call me a nickname, you still allow them to do it. If if you're not celebrating pagan holidays and you still going over to your mom's house for Christmas, yeah, you might not be buying presents, but you're still going over to your mom's house for Christmas and singing all these Christmas carols, Mariah Carey from, from 1995, whatever, you singing all that. All right. I'm, I'm going to let you think about that. One. And that's that's what it's all about. She said, I'm learning to stand on my boundaries. Don't let nobody, not even me, don't let nobody disrespect your boundaries. If that's a boundary you have in place, nah. I mean, yeah, have a conversation with them if you want to. If not, man, hey, whatever. Life too short to be miserable and sad because you got boundaries in place and people don't want to respect them. You need to tell them about it. How many times do we keep telling them the same thing? I'm not. I'm not. I won't. Uh, Kelly Kelly say, nah, no longer sacrifice myself in order to please others. And that's that's what this is all about. I, I want I want to make sure that we all some prayer warriors, that we warriors, that we warriors on in God's army, that we understand that once we set a boundary and we have a conversation with that person, if you choose to, I, I'm the prayer. I like to have a conversation, but once I have a conversation with you. I'm not about to, I'm not about to, no, I'm not going to change. You're not going to get me to change my mind. Why, why would I allow, why would I tell y'all for these last few, several years that I've been on here that I don't celebrate holidays and just because I want to be around family, I'm going to go over there and go eat the egg hunt? I'll be a whole fool to go out there and, and die some eggs with them on Easter and go do some Easter egg hunt, man. But one, I'm too old for that. But two, I don't celebrate Freddy Krueger and go out there to go get some candy. I go buy my own candy. I don't celebrate that evil demonic day, but they got people my age and older than me. They still caught up in it. That's why we got to continue doing I'm going to do another Halloween teaching this year. I will. It's going to be a, a, a new version of the Halloween teachers I did. But yeah, I'm going to do another one. Adam Jaw say, woke crowd keeps their boundaries and you better abide. Right. Hey, how you doing? God bless you. Mikhail, welcome. God bless you. Thank you for being here. Y'all make sure y'all hitting that like button. Thank you. Thank you. Right, C. Warren, they are definitely an idol. You might not consider them to be an idol, but they are an idol. Yeah, I don't know if it's 95, but that Mariah Carey song, I don't know. I'll be having dates somebody. I don't know what you know what I'm talking about. That, that song she sings, when you get that high note, I ain't about to try to sing it. But yeah. Mm -mm. Nah. Nah, I, I, I will admit. So we talk about Christmas. I will admit, I do watch the Christmas story. Not every year that movie, the little guy when he say you'll put your eye out because he's buying that BB gun. I watch that, but I ain't celebrating Christmas. I just think it's funny and it's hilarious. So I do watch that. I will admit that. But me watching Christmas, I watched that not on the day of Christmas. They play it like two weeks before, like and then the week of Christmas, they play it every day, like 24-7 on search. So I do watch that. <laughs> I watch that, but I'm not going so I'm not buying no tree. I ain't got no Christmas lights out. I ain't putting on no no Christmas carols, uh, singing songs. I don't tell, uh, you know, Google or, you know, I can't say her name behind me. The play Christmas carol. No, I, mm -mm, nah, nah, mm -mm. not over here. Not in this house. We ain't listen to no Christmas carol. For what? Why? Why would I do that? I'm good. Hey, Vanessa Wren, how you doing? God bless you. Thank you for being here. Y'all make sure y'all go check out Vanessa Wren as well. She has a YouTube channel as well. Yeah, all the YouTubers coming, coming through tonight. <laughs> YouTube, TikTokers, all kind of stuff. Uh, Michael say this has been so overwhelming, but I can tell you that there is nothing but the spirit of the Lord who leads us through this. Amen. 
Amen. Hallelujah. Y'all pray for him. Pray for him. God bless you. Thank you for sharing that. My sis say, one thing I've learned from NFL and, and uh, faith-based workplace, NFL is my wife for y'all to know, North Free Living, about holidays and holy days and life is go to God. We have to worship God in spirit and truth. God reveals all. Amen. Yeah, go to God. I always say that. You ain't got to take my word for it. Let's go do some research on it. You can watch my video. I, I, I encourage you to go watch my videos on Halloween and, and, and on Christmas and go watch Shannon's video. She didn't did some as well. Go watch those videos. Do some research. Take it to God. And then you tell me what it is. Remember, you ain't got to tell me. If you choose to celebrate Halloween, I ain't going to judge. I ain't going to look at you no different. I just know I put the messages out there. I know I didn't comment it on, on different videos. It's out there. That's all I can say. So if you choose to still celebrate Halloween and all other pagan holidays, it's on you. It's between you and God. If God told you it's okay, I stop because I don't think he will tell you that's okay, but maybe you got a different relationship with God. I don't know. But uh, if he told you it's okay to celebrate that or something, maybe he wants you to do something and, and go through something for Christmas. I don't know. But uh, he told us not to celebrate that, so I, I can't do it. All right, I see what you say, Trucker. Like, so I had to tell my children that Christmas was not on God. And it's hard for children. I get because they see all, Shannon, I talk about they see all the little children at school, you know, coming in with Christmas presents and all this stuff. And, and it's hard. It's real. You got to pray. You got to pray. You got to pray for your children. I ain't doing that, Narnia. I ain't doing that. <laughs> all right, let me, let me get through my last little bit. I'm about to wrap up. Uh, so do you have a game plan to get your life back? Some of y'all should be working your plan. Remember, plan your work and work your plan. Some of y'all should already be. I know I know Arne. I know myself. I know Shannon. I know uh, uh, Minda Mahogany. I know Vanessa Wren, uh, Tyree, David. A lot of y'all, probably all of y'all, are uh, somehow, some way working your plan. Your plan, to, you know, the stuff when you was, went through Narcissus Abuse and all this stuff, I know a lot of y'all are... are doing y'all stuff right now you going you didn't went through deliverance or going through it you're reading your bible more you're praying more you're doing things that that's that's giving you peace and i know you are so are you willing to give up your peace respect children or your life just to be around a certain family hey i know most of y'all gonna say no i know but guess what there's a lot of people that are willing to give up their peace respect children and lose their life, or I guess I can say lose their soul in this case, to be around certain family members so they can celebrate holidays. I I, I can't do it. I, I, I can't do it. I, I, not me. Mm -mm, I can't do it. I won't do it. Mm -mm, I can't. That's our conviction for the Lord. Amen. Uh, uh, Coach just say, say that right, bro, bro. Right, right. Yeah, you gotta, yeah. You gotta understand what's going on. Humble by God say, uh, not yet going through a divorce right now and about to settle. Game plan after healing and signing the divorce paper. Amen. Hey, as long as you got a game plan in place, you know, you got something that you're planning on and you're ready to do it. You know what I'm saying? Increase your prayers right now. Don't wait to pray more. Pray more right now, especially going through the divorce, because that's when people really show you they tell, like they like to say. So pray more now. And increase your increase your 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 time with God now. And then when you get a divorce, the papers are signed. Just keep increasing and keep going through your deliverance and keep going through your game plan, whatever you have in place. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. Amen. Amen. We're gonna keep you in prayer as well. God bless you. Let's see what else we got. What else we got? I know all y'all know this, but it's for the people that's on the fence about this. They might have somebody here that's watching that's not chatting or go watch the replay and don't know who God is. What if I told you, if you gave your life to God, God would never turn his back on you? What if What if I told you that? What if the people in the chat right now agree with that? What if the people in the chat can confess to you right now, just a uh, small friend saying, I have gave my life to God, gave my life to God, and he didn't turn his back on me yet? Just what if that happened? The people that's coming in here to watch this replay can be like, why it's not just Solomon teaching this. It's people in the chat that have given their life to God and, and he hasn't turned his back on them as well. I don't know. It, it, it could happen. I don't know. I'm not saying it's going to happen in the chat. It could. Hint, hint. 
It could happen. I mean, I don't know. It could actually happen. I'm going to wait a while and see if it happens. I'm going to read a couple more because we're almost done. So don't lose your life for one goofball. Goofballs and Jolly Jokers come a dime a dozen. Don't lose your life over a goofball, a Jolly Joker, a narcissist, an evil person, somebody in your family that don't really love you, somebody that don't respect your boundaries, somebody at work that don't like you. Don't lose your life for one goofball. So I should have said life or so for one goofball. It's not worth it. That goofball will go on to be goofy. They remember we we seen the definition earlier. They folly. They they about foolishness and lack of good sense. So that's who they are. That goofball is folly. So just remember. Let me look in the chat. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see what's going on. Yeah, thank you for that. Yeah, uh, let me put that in the Shannon join her CBU workshop on April twenty fifth, Queens. It will help you. That go to link right there. Well, go to narcfreeliving.com. She has the thing on Eventbrite. Check it out. Y'all don't want to miss this. I promise you. Uh, let me leave it up there for a few seconds. Let me read down and see what else we got. Mel say, I've gotten 100% better since leaving the narc relationship. God has definitely come through. It's in the chat. I told y'all I probably would have. I wasn't sure. <laughs> I wasn't sure what happened. But I just figured if I said it, it might happen. Vanessa Wren also said, he won't leave you. Uh, he will also bring you out. Hey, it's in the chat. You ain't got to take my word for it. Let me see, let me see, let me see. Shannon said, don't forget to hit the like button. Yeah, hit the like button if you just come in here. Or they say, no, I would not abandon you as orphans. I will come to you, John 14, 18, NLT. My sister coming, backing up stuff with Bible verses. I told you it might happen that 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 if, you know, if you was on the fence about God and not, not understanding the magnitude of this, God won't turn his back on you, give your life to him. See, the devil... Tell you the difference between the devil and God. The devil, you can give your life to the devil. And he's going to give you those promises, those broken promises. He's going to definitely turn his back on you at some point in time. Happens all the time. God won't do that, though. Right. God will not leave us. Right. All right. Let's go through our last little bit. Let's see where we at. So remember. God has plans for you. I know you might be like, well, Simon, I've been going through this. I've been going through that. I'm going from pillar to post. I dated a narcissist. I got married to a narcissist. I'm with another narcissist. I just divorced another narcissist. What is it? God has plans for you. Why don't you, why don't you do this? Why don't you have a conversation with God and ask God, what are the plans that you have for me? Because everything I've been doing, I've been doing it wrong. God, what job do you want me to do? I've been working nine to five and job at a job at a job. Ain't nothing is satisfying my spirit. Nothing is satisfying, you know, the pay. is not about the money. God, what does he want me to do? And God will reveal to you what you're supposed to be doing. Am I telling you go quit your job tomorrow? No, don't say Solomon. I did not say that. I told you go have a conversation with God so you can figure out what the plans he has. He has plans for each and one of us. Now, some of us choose wisely. Some of us choose wrongly. Some of us serve God. Some people serve the devil. Knows I ain't say some of us because I'm praying that nobody in here is serving the devil. But you get what I'm saying. Some of us serve God. Some some people they they, they they go over there to the devil. They on devil duty, devil time. Matter of fact, let, 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 let's park right here just for a second. So I'm talking about devil time. I think about Beyonce every time I say that. I seen Beyonce coming out with new perfume. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a woman, obviously. And I ain't buying it for Shannon, I can tell you that much. But what I want you to understand is I see she's coming out with this new perfume, fragrance and stuff, and, and, and some other stuff she's coming out with. I think some makeup line, whatever. But one, the name is weird. I can't remember the name, but I know it's weird. But two, they doing uh they doing these things, and when I looked at it, I seen it on TikTok, it, it looked like some witchcraft stuff. And I told y'all before that some of these people pray over these products. I ain't talking about pray good prayer. I'm talking about praying evil prayers and putting witchcraft. Let me say it this way. Some people put witchcraft and sorcery over these products. Y'all might want to pay attention before you go uh, before you go get uh, Beyonce new perfume. I'm just saying. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just saying take it to God before you go get it. The beehive can come from whatever. I didn't say go. don't go buy it. I'm just saying take it to God before you do buy it. And if you do buy it, you might want to uh, pray over that for a while before you uh, sprinkle a little spray on it. I'm just saying. 
And it's some demonic stuff. You ain't got to believe me. Go do some research. Proverbs 24, 11. Uh, rescue those who are being taken away to death. Hold back those who are stumbling to the slaughter. Got a lot of people right now. Some of us was on that path where we were stumbling to slaughter. Some of us was headed to death. You might not know it. And some of y'all know you was headed to death, especially being in the north. Some of y'all wouldn't be here today if it would if, if, if it would have happened. But God didn't allow it to happen. That's why I say God has plans for you. So rescue those who are being taken away to death. Hold back those who are stumbling to slaughter. Hmm. Last thing, last thing. And we're going to read some 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 uh, some comments and then we're going to get about it. Hear it and read it. Uh, interpret it broadly. It's a call. So intervene on behalf of those who are, are in dire situations to rescue them from harm or injustice. It speaks to the more imperative to stand up for the oppressed, to protect those who are unable to protect themselves, and to seek justice and mercy in the face of cruelty or indifference. That's basically breaking down that Bible verse. We want to get a little bit deeper into that Bible verse. So it's standing up. You know, they always say, am I my brother's keeper or my sister's keeper? Or you want to tell somebody, you know, about narcissist abuse? Or you want to tell somebody a story that can save their life? I will. I have. I'm doing it right now. I know Shannon will. She has. She do it all the time. She just did it on Monday. So y'all understand that. So that's all I got. Y'all have any questions? I'll take. I don't really do this. I ain't did it in a while. Couple questions to answer. You got any questions about this or any questions? We can answer either in the chat or right now. Hey, Miss uh Miss, how you doing? Hello, God bless you. Miss my sanity, God bless you. So I'll leave it open for a couple minutes. If you have any questions, you can post them right now. If I can answer my answer, my, I ain't saying I know everything because I don't. Uh what did y'all think about this message? Was y'all able to learn anything from this message? It's always good to get good feedback and make sure that y'all we learn it and learn it together. I know I learned some stuff, just, you know, reading some stuff. I learned some new phrases, especially what Kelly Kelly said about peace snatchers. Never thought about it that way. So we call them peacemakers, but they actually peace snatchers because they snatching your peace. So I, I love that one. We have some few other ones that came through as well. So we have to understand, you know, what we're involved in. We have to understand our assignment. We have to understand what we've been called to do in the eyes of the Lord. Ali, thank you for that, Ali. God bless you. God bless you. She said, uh, we learned so much. God bless you. Thank you for sharing that. Latonya said, thank you so much. I am full of good teaching. Amen. Thank y'all. Thank y'all for that. God bless you. It's always, like I said, it's always good to get feedback, kind of know, hey, I'm on the right track. We're doing this right. You know what I'm saying? You know, uh, so it's always good. Thank y'all for the flame. Thank y'all for sharing this out. Thank y'all for being on here, you know, for the last hour and some change. Uh, God bless y'all. Thank you for that, wifey. Uh, David gave me a thumbs up. Thank you. Uh, say yes, we learned right, right, and that's what it's about. It's about us learning together again. Shannon, put your thing in that one more time, ladies. April 25th, she has her uh, uh, uh I think it's called CBU. Uh, I forgot what she called it, but it's like a quick, like you know, just check in, check in, so CBU check in. Uh, <coughs> excuse me, woo, and then sneezing and stuff. Uh, so yeah, sign up for that, ladies. Uh, check her out on that one. Check her out on Mondays. Like I say, she's live on Mondays. Uh, we did some videos together. If you're new here, subscribe to my wife's channel, North for Living. We did some videos together on both channels, so you can catch us on both channels and stuff. So check us out. Uh, yeah, let me see. We read a few more comments. Let me see. Tyrone say, "Good time and message. Thank you. God bless you." Trucker Life say, yes, thank God for this knowledge and bless you and your family. Bless you as well. God bless you. God bless you. Trucker Life, I think I might ask you before. You drive, you drive flatbeds or what you what you call them? Box trailers? Chemical trailers? I used to drive trucks. I don't know if I ever told you. I used to drive, I used to haul chemical trailers and then I'd work you know, like in the oil field or whatever, but I used to haul a chemical trailer, like the tanker trailer is what I used to haul. I'm just, I'm just curious. I think I might ask you that before, but I don't know. I be forgetting stuff sometimes. Try not to. Lyrics say, always learning, good teaching all the time. Amen. God bless you. Y'all go follow her. She got great music out as well. 
her and my other sister, uh, authentic uh, Andrea, she did the. Uh, I didn't even do the video. I'm gonna I'm a, on the close. I'm gonna do the video. She did the song for my my new intro, so I'll play that on the way out. So she's on TikTok and on YouTube. Okay, so it's Chain Breaker Check In Time. So that's the link. We're gonna leave it up there for a little while, ladies. Y'all want to sign up? Go sign up now. Get your Eventbrite tickets. It's not much. Uh, I always say I tell Shannon this, and I say it all the time. We pay money for for a lot of stuff that costs way more that don't do us nothing. Teachings like this do you something. And I am about to work on a real estate class. I know I talked about it, but I am about to coming weeks. And I'll let Zoom most likely, I think. I don't know. I'm going to see if I'm going to do it on Zoom or do it on here. I don't know. But either way, we're going to do a, a real estate class. I, I don't know which way I'm going to go at it, but I did it before. I had a good turnout. So I'm going to do a real estate class. I'm going to try to do two or three of them this year. And then Shannon's going to get involved with that as well at some point. And coming here, she might get involved with the first one. I don't know. I'm, I'm gonna see what she want to do, but because Shannon became a real estate agent as well, I'm a real estate agent, so I'm gonna do a real estate class. I'll let y'all know we'll set it up on Eventbrite or whatever, and do it that way. And uh, I say some things are free. YouTube is free, but we're gonna charge for that teaching on that. But yeah, so y'all want to learn more about real estate, maybe credit or whatever, whichever way I go. Uh, yeah. Uh, home by God says it's always good to hear your message, learning from others who. Have gone through through this. It gives me encouragement. Hey, Amen. That's what it's all about. Chevy Santa say, "Great message you always bring." Uh, God message on on point. God bless you. Next week, April twenty fifth, Thursday. Yep, yep. For Shannon, uh, thing. I appreciate the both of you. God bless you all in your ministry. God bless you as well. Thank you for sharing. Uh, God bless you and your family. God bless you as well. Home by God. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, a drive van. Okay, okay. My brother driving across country right now. He hauls uh. He got, a, he got a Reaper trailer, though, you know, the refrigerator uh, trailer. I forgot what company you're working for, but yeah, yeah. Yeah, if you have a question, like I say, please put it in there for we pray and get up out of here. Amen, amen. Thank y'all, thank y'all. Matter of fact, before we close out, let me, let me read this, let me read this. God bless you, man. I say thank you, NFL. Uh, North you living in faith-based workplace for all you do for the kingdom. Or they say, God bless you all. If you do not know Jesus or uh, as your personal savior, pray this prayer. God, I come and I repent of what uh, we we uh, telling people to God. Come on, have a relationship with God. Shannon says it's an informal session, tea and talk, question and uh, answers for women survivors of abuse. That's going to be next Thursday. Keep going through in and out. I don't know. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Keep going in and out. Keep going. We still here. We still here. Okay. All right. Oh, you're welcome, Marnay. God bless you. Oh, you drive. Oh, you drive a reefer. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah, we want everybody to get their keys. So we're gonna do the real estate club. We're gonna start pumping them out. Uh, Shannon and I've been discussing about doing some other things. So yeah, be some creation stuff going on uh soon. Uh, Vanessa Wren, uh, she say, love you and uh, and your wife. Messages both. May God bless the family. Thank you. May God bless you as well. I say, follow Vanessa Wren. She'll be on YouTube live and dropping messages as well. Uh, let me see anything else. Shannon, uh, Ali say, where do we submit questions? Where do we submit questions? You talking about, oh, you talking about for the, uh, for next week on the 25th. So Shannon, they want to know where they submit questions at. Thank you, Liz. God bless you as well with the overflow. Amen. Matter of fact, let me play this. Uh, it's like a commercial. Let me play. Let me see what I play. Hold on. Let's see. I'm gonna play what Authentic Andrea had did for me. Make sure it's the right one. Yeah, here you go. So real quick, then we go pray and we'll get about it. Hold on. What's the word today? I'm headed over to faith to face work. Play where we keep our faith in God and get this knowledge and wisdom and overcome knocker. To live a life that's fulfilling I'm a child of God Don't take my kindness for weakness I'm say not soft Cause my strength comes from Jesus God turns your pain into purpose At faith-based workplace We trample over scorpions and serpents Amen, amen I 
man. So she did that for me, and uh, thank God for that. It's, it's a fire intro, so I ain't <laughs> got to be a fire intro, you know what I'm saying? But it's, uh, it's all for the kingdom, so thank God for that. Um, so no questions. Good. Uh, everybody said they, you know, they enjoyed them. We learned some. I learned some stuff too. So thank y'all. Thank y'all for hitting that like button. Thank y'all for being here. Uh, you know what? Let's read. If you don't mind, we talked about a lot again today. Matter of fact, instead of me, uh, hold on. I'm gonna read. I'm gonna read a prayer. I'm gonna read a prayer. Thank you for that. See, Warren say it sounds good. Yeah. I, hey, I, I put the video stuff together, and uh, she did the uh. She did the music and I was able to put the video and stuff together to make it an intro. So it came, I think it came together quite nicely. I got I got some skills. I can't rap, but I got some skills. I can put videos together. <laughs> okay, we're gonna read a prayer. That's what that's how we're gonna close out. We're gonna read a prayer. I'm gonna read two prayers, right? So this is the first one right here. Uh Father, you teach in your word, whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you that whoever divorces his wife for any reason except sexual immorality cause her to commit adultery and whoever marries a woman who is divorced commits adultery. I know we all have heard this before. That's Matthew 5, 31, 32, New King James Version. Stop the, the evil influence of Belial at work in America causing men and women to engage in adulterous relationships and sexual immorality. Bilal seeks the destruction of your divine institution of marriage. Keep me pure in my relationships and let me join the fight to save marriage in America. And that's one prayer. We're going to read one more. Okay, here go the other one. The other prayer. And this is, this is out of uh, the book that I always read out of. Prayers that rock demons and break curses. John Eckhart. Uh, the other prayer right here. Lord, your children were so influenced by the evil spirit of Jezebel in their in their king's life that they sinned by committing sexual immorality and engaging in fornication. Second Chronicles 21 11. Second Chronicles 21 11. America has fallen prey to this wicked spirit and our nation is filled with people who no longer live in purity. Cause your people to make a stand for purity, Lord. Let your people lead this nation to repentance. That's why I got to my repentance for its immorality and to turn to you in purity and dedication. Again, that's out of this book, Prayers That Route Demons and Break Curses. Uh, I read two renunciations right quick. It's always good to read these in the same book. You know what? Let's not read the right now. So we're going to do this called prayers for blessing and favor. Again, prayers for blessing and favor. So, Lord, bless me and keep me. Make your face to shine up on me and be gracious unto me. Lord, lift up your countenance up on me and give me peace. That's number six, 24 through 26. So let me read one more. I am the seed of Abraham through Jesus Christ. And I received the blessing of Abraham. Lord, in blessing, bless me. And in multiplying, multiply me as the stars of heaven and as the sand of the seashore. Amen. Let me find one more. Hold on. Here we go. Again, this is all prayers for blessing and favor. Prayers for blessing and favor. Uh, okay, let me read this one. Lord, bless me and cause your face to shine upon me that your way may be known upon the earth and your saving health among all nations. Let my land yield increase and let the ends of the earth fear you. Fear you, not fear you. Fear you. That's Psalm 67. Again, that is Psalm 67. Let's read another one. Remember me, O Lord, with the favor that you bring unto your children. 
and visit me with your salvation. That is Psalm 106 and 4. Psalm 106 and 4. It goes on to say another one. Let your favor be upon my life as a cloud of the latter rain. Again, let your favor be upon my life as a cloud of the latter rain. That is Proverbs 16 and 15. I don't know about y'all, but I, I love God favor on my life. I love God favor on your life. Let's just be honest about this thing. Let's read a few more. Let your beauty be upon my life. And let me be well favored. That is Genesis 29, 17. Hey, Queen Shannon, how you doing? God bless you. Again, it says, let your beauty be up on my life and let me be well favored. How many of y'all want to be favored in the eyes of the Lord? That's Genesis 29 and 17. Next one. I am highly favored. That's Luke. I always put the Bible verse in there. It's, it's in here. So you can go back and read it yourself. That's Luke 1 and 28. I am highly favored Luke 1 and 28. And this last one, it's not a verse, but I, I love this. It say, Lord, let me receive extraordinary favor. I'm going to say this again. Y'all can repeat it or y'all can say it. It says, Lord, let me receive extraordinary favor favor. I don't know about you, but I want extraordinary favor in the eyes of the Lord. So let me see. Let me flip. Since we read let's, uh, this one. I didn't read some of these before, but it's always good to read them. This is uh, prayers for enlargement and increase. So prayers for enlargement and increase. I bind and cast out all python and constrict the spirits in the name of Jesus. So let's read this next one. Bless me indeed and enlarge my coast. Let your hand be with me and keep me from evil. That is 1 Chronicles 4 and 10. 1 Chronicles 4 and 10. Let's read this. Cast out my enemies and enlarge my borders. Cast out my enemies and enlarge my borders. That is Exodus 34 and 24. Exodus 34 and 24. I don't know about y'all, but I need this one for sure. Enlarge my heart so I can run the way of your commandments. Enlarge my heart so I can run the way of your commandments. That is Psalm 119 and 32. Psalm 119 and 32. So if you don't have the book, it's good that the verses, thank you for putting the verse in there because that way you can go back and read these verses and highlight them in your Bible so you kind of know where they're at, you know? Uh, my mouth is enlarged over my enemies. That is 1 Samuel 2 and 1. 1 Samuel 2 and 1. It says my mouth is enlarged over my enemies. 1 Samuel 2 and and one, I have this one highlighted. I like, I love this one too. I receive deliverance and enlargement for my life. See, some of y'all went through deliverance. Some of y'all going through deliverance. Some of y'all about to go through deliverance, but that's cool. I receive deliverance and enlargement for my life. That is Esther four and fourteen. Esther four and fourteen. The Lord shall increase me more and more, me and my children. That is Psalm 115 and 14. Psalm 115 and 14. Again, I'm going to read that one again. I love that. The Lord shall increase me more and more, me and my children. Psalm 115 and 14. Amen. Uh, let me see. Let me see. It's something else I wanted to read. Hold on. Give me a second. Give me a second. 
it's so much stuff in this book. I, I still be finding new stuff in this book, to be honest, which I really do. Okay, so this one is prayers to release the arm of the Lord. Prayers to release the arm of the Lord. So no one has an arm like you, Lord, full of power and might. That is Job 40 and 9. Job 40 and 9. Matter of fact, let me highlight that. I don't have that one highlighted yet. Job 40 and 9. No one has an arm like you, Lord, full of power and might. Job 40 and 9. Lord, you have a mighty arm. Your hand is strong and your right hand is high. That's Psalm 89 and 13. Psalm 89 and 13. I love reading it because it gets us aid. Hey, if you haven't read, maybe some of us haven't read our Bible verse today or, or, or go read it tonight, but it gets you some extra reading. If you already read it today, you're getting some extra reading in right now. Okay? This right here, another section, uh, releasing the power of God. Uh, Mel say, thank you for reading these. Thank you, Quadisha, for putting the verse in the chat. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You're welcome. Uh, releasing the power of God. Let power and might be released from your hand. Let power and might be released from your hand. That is 1 Chronicles 29 and 12. 1 Chronicles 29 and 12. Scatter the enemy by your power. Notice it didn't say by my power. It didn't say by your power. It's talking about by God power. So scatter the enemy by your power. That is Psalm 59 and 11. I have that one highlighted. So I'm highlighting some new ones as well. Always good to find new stuff to read in here and highlight them. Rule, your, rule over your enemies through your power. Rule over your enemies through your power. That is... Uh, Psalm 66 and 7. Psalm 66, verse 7. Let's read a couple more. We're about to get out of here. This right here, a lot of us need these. These are warfare prayers. A lot of us have been through warfare, whether it was narcissists, whether it was regular abuse, whether it was in the church house, in the full wall church, whether it was in the family, in the workplace. A lot of us have been through warfare. A lot of us recognize it. Some of us don't recognize it. But we're going to read some of these warfare prayers. Again, backed up, they scriptures. So we're going to read some of these, if y'all don't mind. So these are warfare prayers. So the first one is, the weapons of my warfare are not carnal, but mighty through you to the pulling down of strongholds. That is 2 Corinthians 10 and 4. Let me highlight that. I don't have that one highlighted. 2 Corinthians 10 verse 4. I'm going to read that one, one more time. The weapons of my warfare are not carnal, but mighty through you to the pulling down of strongholds. I don't know about y'all, but being in this in, in this community or going through narcissist abuse, you need God to help you pull down some strongholds. You cannot do this by yourself. It's just impossible to try to fight Leviathan and a few of these others by yourself. You're just not going to win. You're going to get beat up every time. But if you allow God to pull down the stronghold, I guarantee you're going to see some change then. A lot of people are asking about changing the narcissist. What about changing your life? What, does, what change do you want to see in your life, right? Let's read the next one. Satan, you have lost the war in heaven. Revelations 12 and 7. Satan, you have lost the war in heaven. Revelations 12, verse 7. This one right here, what well, is two? Deliver me from my strong enemy, from them that are too strong for me. So again, you tagging in God. You going to the to to God. He's never lost a battle. So right here, to me, this is a tag in. It says, "Deliver me from my strong enemy, from them that are too strong for me." You recognizing that this enemy is too strong for you, so you need help from God. So that's why you call it in God. That is Psalm eighteen, verse seventeen. Psalm eighteen, verse seventeen. It says again, "Deliver me from my strong enemy." 
from them that are too strong from me. Psalm 18, verse 17. Amen. So it goes on to say with the next one. Deliver me and bring me into a large place. Deliver me and bring me into a large place. That's Psalm 18, verse 19. Psalm 18, verse 19. Let me see what we have over here. Okay, right here. I rebuke every lion of the forest that comes to slay. That's Jeremiah 5 and 6. I'm going to say that again. I rebuke every lion of the forest that comes to slay. You know, there's the other verse. We always talk about the, the devil runs around like a roar lion. Look at who he can devour, right? So this one right here, I rebuke every lion of the forest that comes to slay. Jeremiah 5 and 6. And this is the last one we're going to read right here. Uh, this last one. I close the door to every demonic rat. It says that I close the door to every demonic rat that would attempt to come into my life in the name of Jesus. That's Isaiah 66 and 17. 60, Isaiah 66 verse 17. It says again, I close the door to every demonic rat that would attempt to come into my life in the name of Jesus. We close the door on them. We're closing the door on them. You have no, no entrance here. You're not allowed here. That, that's the same thing. We're breaking off soul ties and things like that. It's the same thing. You're closing the door to every demonic rat, every every roaring lion that's running around trying to get you. You're closing the door on them. You're slamming the door shut. you asking God for protection. you asking God to lay down his, his hand and defeat your enemy because you realize they're too strong for you. Amen. So again, thank you all for being here while we did this reading, while we did this teaching. Thank uh, thank you, Prophet Kanish, for putting all the verses in there. Go back. If you missed some of the verses, go back, you know, watch the replay or scroll through. You can highlight all them verses, you know, in your Bible, and it gives you some more stuff to read. You know what I'm saying? So I recommend getting this book, Prayers That Rock Demons and Break Curses. Uh, and like I said, I'm going to post uh, the... Uh, does Your Tongue Need Healing by Derek Prince? So we can close out that book. And I told you our next book we're going into is the Spiritual Warfare Manual. You want to get into on that. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for hitting the like button. Thank you for sharing this out. Thank you all for commenting. Thank you all for sharing. Uh, y'all comments, sharing some of y'all testimonies, asking questions, doing the chat. That always helps because other people get to, you know, answer questions, you know, because we got some very intelligent people in here. It's not just me. It's a bunch of people in here that's very intelligent, know about this stuff, know better than I, I know in a lot of this stuff. And it's just, you know, awesome for us to come together and be able to pray for one another and help one another. So we just go ahead and pray. Anyway. Even though I read prayers, God leave me to just go ahead and pray anyway before we close out. So let's go ahead and pray. God, we come together just saying thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you for this time of worship, this time of ministry. Thank you for everybody that came through the chat, whether they still here or had to leave early or just listen in, whether they couldn't chat, whether they sowed to see the time the whole time, whatever it may be. We just thank you, Heavenly Father, for the questions that was asked. We thank you for the prayers that have been uh uh, uh, say it for, for different people that's going through different things. We pray for every brother and sister that's represented in this live tonight. We pray, we thank you for uh, we pray for every brother and sister that's going to watch this replay. We 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 pray for every family member that's represented right now, Hello Father, in this chat, oh, Hello Father. We thank we pray over this channel. We pray over faith based workplace, oh, Hello Father, it continues to grow leaps and bounds and continue to help people. We pray over North Free Living that it continues to grow and continue to help people. Uh, women and men that's dealing with different issues when it comes to North abuse. We pray over Prophet's Konisha channel and everything she's doing, oh hell and Father. We pray over her channel. We pray that it continues to grow leaps and bounds. People begin to understand that we're in end times right now. It's, we don't know when the, when the time is, but we know we're in time. So we praying for everybody right now. They get a closer relationship with you, Heavenly Father. That they read their Bible, they understand their Bible, they understand the verses and what what's said, what's right here in our Bible, Heavenly Father. We pray over Mindy Mahogany and her channel as well, Heavenly Father. We pray her channel and her singing and her ministry that she has continues to reach 
thousands and thousands of people on the phone. We pray over uh, our sister, Pink Girl Teachers Joy. We pray over her channel as well. We have to continue praying over all our social media. So not just the YouTube, but we're praying over the TikToks. We're praying over the Instagram. We're praying over the uh, Facebook. We're praying over the Twitter and and, and uh, the Discords and all the different things we, we own. We pray over all our social media because we know that the enemy is just trying to attack us on all these different platforms and, and, and trying to... Uh, trying to uh, stop us from delivering message. We even pray over Prophetess Jasmine, Father, for that she's delivering messages day in and day out where she's, you know, telling us things that's going on, stuff that God is de uh, delivering to her as well. So we pray over our sister as well. She continues to just to be a beacon of light, Father, Father. We pray over every YouTube channel, uh, Vanessa Wren and anybody I might have missed. We pray over every channel that's here that they continue to grow in. And it's not just for numbers. It's so people can understand that the, the war time, the spiritual warfare and things that we in. It's not just about faith based workplace, it's about all these channels that I mentioned and some of the channels that that, that, that uh, was not mentioned that, that I know come around here. I Forgive me for forgetting, but thank you for being here. But we pray for over all those channels. We pray over all those platforms. We pray over all those people. Everybody's doing it the right way. We just say thank you. I'm father. We come together and continue to pray for one another. We continue to lift one, one another up. So we say thank you. We pray over our workplace. Uh, that a lot of us are still working regular job. We pray over every destination that we go to. We pray over our vehicles. We pray over our homes. We pray that your angels are encamped around our homes. We pray over our doorways that the, that the devil and demons and anybody like that has no entryway into our homes. No matter it's a doorway or a crack or whatever, we pray that the blood of Jesus cover our home and our vehicles as we go to and fro. So we thank you, Father. We pray as our family and our friendships strengthen over on this YouTube channel that we continue to evolve and continue to pray for one another. So we lift everybody up, every business that's represented on here. I know our name has cake, uh, her, her, her cakes and everything and our pies and her, her, her bakery and all that. We pray over her, 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 her business as well. On for every business that's represented on here, whether we know about them or not, uh, don't know about them, we pray over, we pray that they all cover the home front. So we thank you. We thank you as we get ready to go to sleep tonight. Oh, front. We pray that we have a peaceful sleep. We pray that we wake up well rested. We pray that the message tonight fed us on Helen Father, that we understand and we go back and maybe watch the replay and figure out something else that might have been said in the chat or something that we might have missed Helen Father. So we pray over all our friends. We pray over our family, the ones we talk to and the ones we don't talk to. We hold no grudges on Helen Father. So we pray over, over the people even though they hold grudges over us and even though they put us in smear campaign, we still want to get to a place of forgiveness where we can forgive them we ain't got to forget, but we want to forgive them and still be able to pray for them. We pray for our enemies. We pray for our neighbors. We pray for our communities. We pray for the United States as a whole. It's under spiritual attack, no matter which city you go to. People trying to run from city to city. They can escape demonic attacks, but go through deliverance. So we pray for deliverance. We pray for healing. We pray for understanding. We pray for more Bible thumpers, which are Bible teachers as well. We pray over people in the music industry that's trying to do it the right way, like our sister Lyricist and Authentic Andrea and others. We pray that they continue delivering message, that people hear that message. We know they got a lot of demonic music out of this, so we got to counter that with, with good spiritual music. So we pray over that music, oh, Father, they put out that they're people on the father so thousands and millions of this time of worship we thank you on the father for this time we pray that we all get a great night's sleep and we wake up well rested tomorrow this we asking your son jesus name amen amen and amen thank you thank you thank you again for being here it's always appreciative appreciative i thank y'all let's go uh get your eventbrite tickets over to uh shannon next thursday the 25th Go check out www.northfieldliving.com. Go check her out. Uh, I told you I'm going to do a real estate thing. I'm going to drop the I'm also going to drop the uh, in the, uh book club. I'll drop that. I'm about to work on it's just prepping. It's prepping. It, it's prepping. It's prepping. Go, let me see. Ah, come on, little thing. Well, I always want to ask you on the internet, but we we here, we made it. So, uh, yeah, so I'll be posting those things. So, check out your community tab. Like I say, go check out Shannon thing that she has coming up on Thursday. Uh, for the basically questions and answers, what she's going to be doing for the ladies. 
So thank y'all for being here. Thank y'all for staying for the reading and the prayer. That's always great, a uh, great thing to stay for. Condition, but stay for the prayer, stay for the reading when we do readings and stuff. Uh, and go go check out some of the channels I, I talk to y'all about. Uh, you know that, that's in here. Go check them out. So God bless y'all, and hey, I'll see y'all next time. Uh, I'll see y'all. I guess Monday when Shannon goes live. I'm not gonna be in the thing on uh next Thursday. That's for ladies, but I'll see y'all when Shannon go live on Monday, and I'll be back live Wednesday. So. Uh, but I, I will try to put something together. I probably take one of my teachings down and push it back and do one of the trainings. I think we got good feedback on. Uh, it wasn't end time prep; it was just prepping, you know, for storms, for blizzards, for hurricanes, for tornadoes. So I'm gonna do a teaching on that uh, coming soon in the next few weeks. So I'm gonna do a thumbnail, get that all together, and put that out there. So God bless y'all, man. Y'all have a good night. Thank y'all for hitting the like button. Thank y'all for sharing this out, and we'll see y'all next time. Blessing. Thank you. God bless you. Good night, fam. Good night, Nay. Good night, Kelly. Kelly. Uh, Latonya, all y'all. God bless y'all. Thank y'all for being in the code. So this is a great message. God bless y'all. God bless you as well. Thank y'all for being here. And uh, we'll see y'all next time. What's the word today? I'm headed over to faith-to-face -to work. Place. Where we keep our faith in God and get this knowledge and wisdom. And overcome knocker to live a life that's fulfilling. I'm a child of God. Don't take my kindness for weakness.